Hi everyone, uh, tonight we're going to do a review, so that's the fourth review of the same series. Tonight is going to be a little bit special because we still don't talk about routing, but tonight we won't talk much about movement, we'll focus on techs, uh, techniques, setups, we will try to especially focus on that and instead of having a 45 minute segment of a seed, I actually reviewed an entire seed and I have uh, all of those little timestamps that uh, I plan to show uh, during uh, during this video, which is also uh, live with all of the homies. We're going to be reviewing the gameplay of someone called What the Hell's Happened, um, probably one of the best player in the world, even though he will disagree. Um, okay. So let's go on with it. Uh, I'm just here to precise one more thing. We're not here to destroy him in any way. Uh, this is all made to propose. There's no obligation. It's to propose uh, options for improvement and uh, just uh, maybe show options uh, more consistent, potentially faster, slower, uh, just, you know, so that we have clear idea and then everyone can make his own choices uh, in terms of technique and that's how um, you build your play style you just get your own choices in there but you have to know what's available for you and that's the kind of help that i want to provide uh, to him tonight so uh, i'm going to have two different scenes so uh right here wait where is it it's it's there, it's there, okay, over there is his gameplay, it's really difficult, uh, it's his gameplay here, you can see my mouse, I'm going to show stuff, uh, and then sometimes I will myself play and show uh, a little bit what happens uh, for things that are unclear. Uh, what the hell was using sound and he was also using his microphone, so you might hear him talk, so I'm going to reuse his volume. Uh, a little bit and I'm not gonna show everything I'm gonna skip to the points that I wanted to uh, um, to talk about so here's the first thing that I wanted to talk about uh, this is a classic situation of uh, you get out of the of the windmill and uh, you want to get that jump that is right about there so what he did was pretty fast okay sadly he missed but you know sometimes things happen but yeah what he did was just target to the right and then try to yolo something with analog um that's fast that's really really fast but that's probably not consistent yo what's up kirox welcome welcome uh so i'm gonna show the movement that i use and uh i think i came up with it but it's not really like it's it's no big deal um, so what I do is, as soon as I get out, I target, then two side ups right, and then hold down right, or maybe a little under down right, and then target, and that grabs very consistently the ledge. So uh, I think that's a good movement, and the advantage is that like you know what you're doing and. Uh, it's consistent and it's not super slow like you could probably do something else that would be faster but honestly this is really not too bad because during the entire side hop you can move your joystick to down right and then um, you can wait for link to be against the wall before you target so that you make sure that you're going to grab um, I've seen other people target, turn around, do two side ops and use the side roll and hold up uh, to get this. I think this is even more precautions, like uh, this is probably more consistent, it's slower, but uh, but yeah, why not? Why not? Okay, so that was the first thing that I wanted to uh, to tackle. And, uh, and that's all I wanted to say. It's no big deal, not super complicated. Uh, and it's just a, a little boost of consistency that uh, you can get pretty easily. Okay, 
Next thing I wanted to talk about uh, is in Dodongo's cave, a, aka Dudong's cave. So we're going to go to the blue diamond glitch room, uh, which is around 720. Okay. And uh, we're having a particular situation in which uh, our friend with the hell doesn't have uh, any explosive. He only has strength and he's going to go pick up one of those two uh, and then go put it over there in the middle. There is a faster strat, uh, which is to uh, go and get the fourth one here. You just lift it, drop it to the ground, flick to the left, grab this one, and then you have a lot of time to throw it in the corner over there. And you do that kind of like double explosion strat. So that's a way to do that boost, uh, but with only strength. And then you have time to go get the other two, lift it, get in front of the other wall, uh, and it saves about two seconds. Um, let me see if I can find the comparison. I have the comparison on my YouTube. Uh, give me a second. Okay. Uh, strength, stairs. Maybe this is going to be fine. No. Comparison, DC, stairs. Okay, here it is. So, uh, yeah, let's watch it real quick. You can watch it here. So it's going to be here. So you go between, you go place link between the fourth and the fifth. And uh, I was just mashing right here. Like once you're in position, you just mash A. And once you pick up that one, you have a lot of time. And then you go pick up that one and you go get yourself in front of this and uh, you save about two seconds. Wait, one and a half second, sorry. Is it one and a half second? Yeah, one and a half. So that's a, that's a little bit of a, of a tech upgrade. So uh, yeah, why not this one? A uh, quick reminder, we're talking about someone that is incredibly good at the game. So that's why I will pick up even if it's one and a half second. I think it's worth it. So, uh, next thing is still in Dudong's cave. Um, we're going to see uh, the technique that uses this chew and goes for a ground jump here. Um, you're going to go for a roll from here. You're going to like roll into the stuff to do the ground jump. I think this makes the timing like even tighter so I'm not really sure that helps. And then the, the second thing that I don't really like about this is that you're getting the recoil uh, that is sending you towards the camera when your objective is over there. So you're actually rolling to your objective, getting recoiled back, and then you're going to go to your objective again. So the distance that you got recoiled, you just covered it three times. Uh, which I think is not like a super, super good idea. Um, what I would do, and uh, I'm, I'm not going to show it in DC, I'm just going to show it, um, I'm just going to show it in CAC, is like when you approach the stair, so uh, you're going to be in a situation like that where uh, you have the stair in front and uh, I think what I do is like I throw the bomb and then I climb to the side and then I get the ground jump from the side. So you throw the bomb, then climb up a little bit over there. And uh, sorry, I'm getting that roll because my distance sucks. And then get this, which means you're going to get the recoil towards your objective. And uh, I think this is going to make you uh, a tiny bit faster. And it's just... Uh, because you're going to be uh, doing the ground jump from this technique, which I know you usually do, um, it will be more lenient. So you will be faster and more consistent at that. So yeah, throw a little bit on the right 
and then when you climb it's just like you throw a little on the right and then when you climb you're already setting up your distance uh, to the bomb get close to the bomb boom boom a plus r and uh and you get the recoil okay uh you need to go a little faster on the way i explain stuff but okay now uh 834 what did i do um wait i forgot about something at 834 oh yeah about this um if you climb on that little wall you can target while climbing and you just have to hold up and you will be in front of that little section uh, to get the side hop. I personally don't go for the side hop, but uh, feel free to go for it because, you know, it's optimal. But it's just one frame. If you do it early, it's a, it's a big time loss, let's be honest. But what you're going to be doing is you're going to climb on the sidewall here, which means if you had gotten it, you would have had an angle that puts you in a weird place to actually, like, you don't really go, like, the side hops doesn't really go fully towards your objective. So I think if you can try to, like, sneak in uh, just behind that statue and target during the climb, you won't target any of the keys, pretty much guaranteed. I think this is a this is a better way to like get muscle memories for something that will just always be the same since you can hold up uh, for that trick. So yeah, this is a thing too. Uh, okay, well, which one is next? Next, we're going to go to Mido's house for uh, saving about five frames. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, in Mido's house, the way things work is when you enter the room, you have uh, you you have already cleared that much. Okay. So going to one of the first chests makes it that like it's not worth rolling, but you could roll to a further chest. And it you will um, take advantage of the rolling speed uh, to go to that further chest. So um, actually, the best thing that I like to do here is from this one, I go directly to the further one, which really takes advantage of a full roll speed because you've been walking here. So it's six speed against 825. And then after this one, you had no idea. After this one, oh no, I go down right. Yeah, 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 that's what I do. I go down right and then I go up with like, it's a little lefter than up. And what's good is like, you can just mash that roll because it's so close that you can just bonk in and it will just do. And then you get another diagonal uh, to down left, which one more time uh, is going to take advantage of roll. Um, and then you're going to go up once more. And what's nice for finishing on this one is that the joystick angle that you need to hold in order to go to the door is only left. It's only left and you want to wait a few frames before you roll so that you don't get zero speed when you get out. Uh, but that's the only thing. So yeah, uh, usually going completely down right, then up, then down left, then up, then full left. Um, this saves a tiny bit. Uh, like We were not sure that it saves time. And then Rosewater did a little task that did it perfectly. And, uh, and the task was saving frames. Like, I don't know if it was six, seven or eight. But uh, it was it was faster and it's just easier to do fast because walking and pressing A on the perfect frame is insanely hard. Uh, rolling and then getting the stuff because of a bonk or because you're at the end of the roll, it's much easier. 
So it's easier and a little faster. Okay, that was probably the smallest time save that I have to propose uh, in the entire thing. Uh, the next thing is uh, consistency improvement for uh, serious forest meadow because we all know <laughs> five frames knife. Has it ever happened? What the? Yeah, that's your name. Your name is what the hell? Um, okay, so you're doing this thing what? that baits the homie. Um, there is a setup that you could have used here, you know, like you target there and uh, do you want me to show you? I think you know those setups, so I don't really think you, you need me to, sh to show you this. Uh, but any anyway, let's go. Let's go there just to uh, have some fun. Sierra Forest Meadow from Woods. You do know the setup. That's that's not what I wanted to talk about. Oh my god, Navi. Come on, I have stuff to do right here. Thank you. Okay. Um... There is this stylish thing like if you if you get really close like do you see like there's like a wider space at the at the point of the of the hat uh turn around uh 2 ESS 2 ESS is something like this uh please can I have this first try But yeah, this setup exists. I don't think it's worth doing. I don't think it's worth doing because it's really difficult. Uh, that's that's not really what I wanted to show, but that's that's a possibility. Uh, the other setup you have is get to the wall from here, backflip, two side hops and then get in position and the other thing is what you did is to go from here and then uh and then do the stuff i'm gonna get a hook shot right here okay so how is this thing done i never do it it's like this it's probably like this okay now, one thing that I usually see, and this is what I wanted to talk about, is like uh, I see a lot of like hold up and then and then hold up right, you know, like people doing stuff like uh, like this, you know, and you you can watch my inputs uh, right there, and and this is like me trying to switch from up to upright, uh, which is completely unnecessary. Um, the way things work in Zelda is like if you target and press A you will get a dry roll and no matter what direction you hold during the dry roll it will always go straight so what you can do is target dry roll and instantly after you dry roll you hold upright which means upright will be inputted as soon as link is airborne the rest of the roll will go straight so then when you do this, when you know this, there is no more, oh, you have to switch from up to upright. It's, this is all gone. It's like you take your angle, press A upright, there we go, done. Uh, th this can be done in most of, those, uh, most of those jumps, and it really just simplifies your whole entire life. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to show about this. Like, even though people are very consistent at them. Uh, okay, so you're taking your angle, and here uh, we, can, we can see you. You are not targeting. Um, you nailed it, because uh, you're, you're like that. But, uh... Every time, every time with these settings. Hello? No. No. <laughs> Did, can you guys hear? The disappointment of 50 Skulls is dense fire. Um, <laughs> do you guys want to hear it again? Let's see it. Oh no! Every time, 
every time with these settings. Hello? No. No. <laughs> every time. It just keeps going. Okay, so this man is really happy. Um, and we're going to go on. It was a fantastic seed. He won by far. Okay, so SFM jump, that was it. And now 1835, we're going to give in Richard Z. Salut, Olivia. What's up, Olivia? <laughs> I think I say, oh, really, you said that? Hmm. I wonder why. Oh, yeah, the SGL thing yesterday was about that bad. Um, okay, so this is Kiki's house. There's a there's a not so well known thing in those houses where the camera does not move. Um, I always wondered if it works in Mido's house. I don't think it does. Uh, okay, towns. What is it? It's market night from Alley, right? Is that it? Didn't even know there was an alley right there. Uh, okay, what I want to show is that you can press C up in those houses, you can press C up, and what C up does is completely change the camera. Uh, C up completely changes the camera, and basically about there, you can target the lady and talk to her instead of needing to go over there. Um, and then you're closer to the door, so you can get out faster. N up timed it like this is a tip from N up, and he timed it to save ten frames. Uh, ten frames for a room that you're in every time. It's uh, it's all right. I think it's all right. Um, I personally do it because I think it looks okay, and uh, you know. And it's uh, it feels a bit better, but uh, yeah, ten frames. It's not much, but it's uh, it's an easy thing to do. <laughs> We're at fifteen frames right now. Let's save a few more. But yeah, okay. So that's that's one tip uh, that is pretty pretty easy to uh, implement. So you don't have to be so far uh, from this, you know. And uh, and by the way, you could have done a roll, but that's something else. Okay, uh, after that, we go to 2018, uh, 20.18. Yeah, um, you're going to use many sticks when, oh, you're going to use a bomb. Yeah, you're going to use a bomb. Um, I think I just wanted to show that, like, there is a there is pretty easy ways to get uh, broken sticks when you know um, um, there is one mechanic that is really really important to know about. So uh, so let's go and talk a little bit about it. Uh, let's go from graveyard as child. Okay, from graveyard as child. Uh, what you can do is target, hold up, pull your stick, and jump slash. Uh, this will get you a broken stick. The reason for this is that you see the slope. If you jump slash on a wall during a slope, you will always get a broken deco stick. So uh, if I press C right, I soft lock. So for example here, I get a broken Deku stick. Uh, you can get a broken Deku stick in so many ways in Kakariko, like right here. Um, so a anything that uses a slope, this is going to work. So, uh, so this is really, really handy. Uh, so yeah, Kak is just full of slopes everywhere. So it's a, it's a really nice place to get a broken Deku stick. It works less well on the right side because uh, Link is holding the stick on slightly on the left, especially during the jump slash. The jump slash goes off on the left, so it's always good. But yeah, 
uh good thing to remember from graveyard just straight up and boom you got it and you can go grab your skulls so uh that's a cool one and i wanted to uh mention this little mechanic of uh uh how some broken stick work so yeah that's uh that it's really handy to just know about uh this thing uh, it was Juke telling me that and telling me that like it was super free in, in Kakariko and then we figured out any any slope just gives it to you super easily. Yeah, you want to keep your sticks but with consumable at the start it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, yeah. Decision and routing, that's going to be up to you because I'm nowhere near your level at this. But uh, I do understand that like in your situation, you had nine sticks and uh, you knew you were getting five skulls. So you preferred to go for bombs. Uh, bombs is, is no big deal in randomizer standard at the moment because we're too scared of allowing guessing. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, um, it's consumable stuff. I we're doing a tech review. Uh, reminder: I'm not talking about routing. I'm not talking about movement. Cause what the hell is moving too fast? And we're going on. Redead Grotto broken stick. Oh, uh, it's probably soonish. Is it now? Yeah, it's now. Uh, you're gonna hate that one because. Uh, the way it works is when you enter, uh, you side hop left, and then it's one or two ESS left and jump slash. And uh, this gets you a broken stick. I don't need to show. I think it's clear enough. Uh, you could probably see up it. Uh, you could probably say, hey, um, I got plenty enough consumables. I don't need that. So uh so that's fine. Let's move on to 2550 uh where little tip of mine uh something that I really really like is um okay, I'm probably going to warp there to show it. But yeah. You're here and from here what you want to do is um you want to go over there and check the the Rudo letter stuff. So uh, let's work there real quick. Lake Halia uh, from from lab. Okay, sweet. Now uh, I'm gonna show you the game. So you're about there, okay? And uh, you see you see the pole out there. You you get to the you like aim to the right of this pole and then you can go for a back walk and then if you just go for a back walk you will hate yourself for grabbing this so what you want to look is you're going to look on your left you're going to look for uh the corner bricks of the house you see the corner bricks of the house when they appear on screen you backflip and then you can keep back walking and you will be exactly on that platform. So uh, I really like this. I don't know if it's that good, but uh, um, I, I think this little one is cool. Uh, now let's watch all what you did. So yeah, so the hint is those bricks of this corner. I, I really enjoy it. And you can aim right there. <laughs> You're going to forget for sure. Yeah, it's it's no big deal. Um, okay, so now uh, what's the next thing we're going to be talking about? Next thing is fishing. Ooh, fishing, fishing, fishing. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm the world champion of fishing minigame. No one beats me. I'm just, I'm just that good. Uh, so I also use a three roll pattern. Um, I go a little more left, like a little over there. The, the big thing that you want to remember, um, at fishing is that 
the when the water is really shallow, the fish is going to be jumping. And when it jump, you pull on the rope faster and it just jumps into your arms way better. So actually, like, the mistake you're doing right now is you have the water completely, like, all the way up to your shield. You want to have the water under Link's knees, always, always. You never want to be that far into the water. There's, there's no way this is going to be fast. Uh, or the wait it can be fast it can be really fast actually like you, you could get super flash fishing with that but the probability is lower you'll just get it less times so uh so yeah then in here we can see you you move the stuff i think you're moving your joystick to to reel um so reeling is done with pressing a and then if you move the joystick, it will do those big uh, And then if you press R, it gives like a boost to the speed of the reeling. So actually like you throw, when you throw, during the throw, when you press A, it's gonna, it's gonna stop the throw from going too far. And then you reel with A plus R. And you try to get the, the 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 bait as close as possible to Link. If you're too greedy, you'll just get get it back in. Uh, sometimes, if the bait is too close to Link, the fish doesn't want to bite. I don't know if he's scared of Link or something. So there's like a just in between of like the fish and the bait are like a meter and a half, two meters away from Link. And then when he grabs, you're gonna just get that guy out of the water. Uh, yeah, it's not very well known that R does something, but at least it does something in a very linear way, which is uh, which is really good. Yeah, this is a uh, sponsored by Juan Olaf van der Bilut, the world champion of fishing. Remember his name. Uh, yeah, and you're going to be doing the same mistake as adult. I don't remember. Yeah, it's at 117.45. We'll be there later. Uh, okay. Uh, I think it's going to be a minute later. You're going to be at Talon Minigame. Uh, Talon Minigame, there's a way to get the camera. Should I go there and show you? I have a feeling if I go there and show you, I'm just going to fail. Uh, but let's go fail it all together. This is going to be perfect. So we go to Lon Lon Ranch and uh, from Talon's house. So then we just have to cross one door. That uh, seems pretty good to me. Oh, he's not there. Okay, I'm going to give you the idea. Uh, so what I do is like I flick, r I f I flick left-ish, maybe a little upper than... And then I move in front of him and talk to him. What's going to do is that I'm going to talk to him with the camera being like that. And when he's going to throw the cocos, well, the camera is a little bit of a bitch. So the camera is going to move. But most likely, you can, you can keep an eye on the one that I call the middle one. The middle one is the hardest one to find because it's nowhere near uh, the edges. And this is where the density of cocos is the biggest. So you want to keep an eye on, on that one. And then you go pick it up and it's just first try. And then you can go over there. And usually the one that's over there, it's pretty easy. And then you go pick up this one. Uh, but that's, uh, that's really good. So yeah. Uh, the other option is you go there, you flick over there, and then uh, and then talk to him. But you you are taking a chance at actually uh, getting there and having the the target go onto Talon. Hey, what's up, T two? Yeah, Kirox, you <laughs> There are chances that you will grab a cuckoo. Oh, shit happens. Uh, in these settings, you always have a shield, so grabbing a cuckoo is not that bad. You can just press shield.
uh before you had to throw which is pretty slow but uh yeah but that's all right so the camera manip actually saves lives well not lives but honestly like it's not technically optimal because you could have got like chance and just grab the good ones but if you play it 20 times 20 times without and 20 times with you will see that the 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 average is way better if you do the cam nip and this is something you do at every run so uh so that's sweet <laughs> you won the race t2 nice i think it was a standard old school settings race let's uh let's say it like this cuz uh, this youtube video is already in the future uh what's next uh okay wait Where's what's the hell gameplay? So yeah, what you did is talk to him here, and then you don't see shit, and then it's uh it's difficult, makes your life hell. So the the first one is free, but it's kind of always free, and then here, oh my god, I mean you're really good, <laughs> you picked it up super fast, but let's be real. When you arrive here, you have no idea which one is which. Like, it could be any of those five, basically. <laughs> you, just, you just knew because you're you. But uh, think about everyone else, okay? Okay? Don't make me mad. Um, all right. That's cool. Uh, now, the next thing is at 3218. And it's everyone's favorite track, the one that Xef usually skips. It's uh, Lost Woods, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you're doing something here. Um, you're, you're like flicking up left and then, uh, um, and then getting the position for your side hop. Um, I think this is really fast uh yeah there's a setup for that the i find the setup really really slow um so let's go there and let's show you uh what i personally do okay so okay let's let's start from here so there's a setup that is basically side up, side roll, and with that angle, if you're in the corner, I could have side up to that corner, but like say, um, yeah, with with this angle, you actually fall right in there. Uh, I don't like it. I think it's slow. Um, you see that that um, do you say brighter spot on the on the ground? Sorry, I'm French. Like that thing. I personally roll to that thing, and then when I'm at that thing, I flick upright, and then flick right and side hop. And this is pretty consistent. Like, uh, I I usually get it, so it's not that bad. And worst case scenario, like if you don't get it, you didn't lose too much time. Uh, one advice I would have is like, don't worry about being perfectly in the corner. I like to not be too close because otherwise uh, there are chances that I think this wall is sticky. Yeah, uh, this property is called stickiness of a wall. Some walls are sticky, some are not. But like it attracts a link to targeting it more than others. Uh, and it, it, it could mess up. So uh, so what I like to, to do is just uh, just go there and uh, even if I'm not completely to the side, this probably also works. So uh, that's that's the way that I set it up. So yeah, uh, that's uh, that's the way that I do it. Otherwise, you could uh, you could effectively like use the the other setup with the side upside roll. uh and yeah it's uh it's almost guaranteed i just i just find it somehow slow like 
if you wing it, fail, and climb, you're probably breaking even with the setup. Because, uh, um, uh, side hop is seven frame, side roll is 12 frames, and then the side hop is the same as the other one. So, and you're probably wasting one side hop. So, that's probably something around. It's around 25 frames paid for the setup, so that's more than a second and a half. Um, I feel like missing and climbing is the same. I I really don't know, but that's you, you get the idea. Uh, as a reminder, um, it might sound like I'm telling people what to do, but what I want to do is propose show the options and then each and everyone can choose what they prefer and that's how we have different play styles and that's that's the beauty of uh of being uh beautiful individual snowflakes thank you uh okay Grand city side hops to darunia which is one of the most recent addition to the stuff that i started doing you want to propose to what the hell exactly um i'm i'm doing this uh, because i proposed what the hell and he uh, he agreed oh yeah okay so now we're getting into goron city and in goron city um the carpet oh wait sorry we're getting into goron city oh, and uh when you enter goron city the camera is perfectly aligned, like right in front of you uh, is the, the carpet that you want to play Zelda's Lullaby. You could do one thing, you could backwalk, and then when you see the Goron, when you see the stuff, backflip, and then keep backwalking. This would make that your overall speed would be uh, more consistent because backwalking is going to be 825, but then during the backflip, you're going to be at six speed, uh, which is pretty bad, let's be honest. So, uh, I've recently seen glitchless runner, they flick left and then they do a bunch of side hops. So, that's what I would recommend. The advantage of this is like, okay, you're probably going to lose a few frames because you're not going to be doing frame-perfect side hops, but, uh, you know, some of them are probably going to be fast. And then during the big step, during the fall, uh, during the entire fall, you're going to be at 8.5 speed, if I remember correctly. Uh, side hop full speed is faster than roll full speed and is faster than backwalk full speed. Uh, but it just decelerates um, on landing. But yeah, uh, that's uh, that's a strat. So flick left and then do a bunch of side hops to the right. And as you can see, like this is just straight ahead. And then you will uh, you will play ZL. So that's a thing. Okay. Now, DC lighting eyes CS skip at 4110. Yeah, 4110. Uh, we're going to be exploring. Uh, this is a tech from. Um, it's from Toxic Oxygen. It's, it's actually a little complex, but you want to try it out because, okay, this is fast, but you can't move while the the mouth is opening yeah this is your home toxic is it not <laughs> and so the thing is uh yeah the seed was weird okay when you're on top of this you see how it like peaks when you're on top of this you throw and you get the first one that's gonna that's gonna get uh one of them uh, yeah, the first one, the, the one that's closer to you. Then what you're going to be doing is jump until over there and you're going to leave about yes size in front of Link before, before the gap, just so that you have a little step to throw the bomb. Uh, and you don't want to be too close because otherwise the bomb you throw will not reach. 
But then what you want to do after that is basically like, okay, okay, let's, let's show it from here. You're going to be over there. You pull a bomb. You don't really need to rush. Like you pull bomb, mini step throw, and then immediate, like you could mash bomb so that you place another bomb that is going to fall on this one. This one would be the one that is already activated. And then you back walk and pull a bomb. What's going to happen is that this will be already lit and it's going to receive the first explosion. So it will trigger the Dun -dun, like you failed. And then very soon after this one will trigger with a correct sound. And I don't know why, but this will make that during the opening of the mouth, you get control from Link and you will have backwalked uh, around there with a bomb over your head so you will be done uh, exploding the wall so when you take back control you just have to roll down and you will be um, uh, you will be opening the chest should I should I actually show that oh my god if I try to show it I'm I'm so scared I'm gonna fail but you know sometimes you have to be scared and still go for it this is uh this is what what people would do right uh, yeah okay okay let's let's try because i have the feeling that this wasn't clear okay navi let me go so blue diamond glitch into right over there and now from this okay this is a cardinal direction so if you don't have a straight angle like the the camera will just catch up to you and put you into a cardinal direction so just don't don't worry too much about your angle um it's a bit complicated i'm not going to go into detail about camera snapping to cardinals uh okay so you go out there you throw on the seam and then you go position somewhere over there, I suppose. Okay, let me put a safe state here because I'm going to mess it up, that's for sure. Uh, you pull a bomb throw, then place one. Pull a bomb throw, place one, back walk, and pull a bomb. And here I have control. You see how like I got control back um, before the stuff. So uh, this draft's from Toxic Oxygen. What a sick dude. He's doing research for a new strat, which is a much harder task than what I do. Um, I just do shitty setups with setups and side rolls. Nothing too hard. So yeah, he's the real hero. Go follow him. Uh, okay, DC lighting eye CS skip and then 4140 is a back walk that apparently you didn't back walk is that part of the game? at 4140. Maybe you lose your shield oh yeah, this is actually something that um, I've been wondering why it's it's not more well known. Um, okay, so. Usually what I like to do is I like to go on the left side. What the hell was going on the right side because of uh, because of reasons. Um, he was a child doing stuff. What happens here is like if you roll forward, you will get a jump here. The problem of the jump is that it makes Link be at running speed. A jump in terms of horizontal velocity is running speed. So it's pretty slow compared to the other options that you have. Ideally, you want to side hop down stuff. So I guess side hopping would be a good thing. But side hops, you know, like humans have a tendency to not press A at the good time. Uh, so what I actually enjoy to do here is backwalking. But now there's another reason to do this is like 
there's two little buckaroos that are hanging out over there. And the closer you get to them, the more they are likely to start going at you. So if you jump that little step that is in front of me, if you get a jump from that, you actually go closer to them. So you actually have more chances to trigger them. If you backwalk or side hop, you stay lower on the ground and you decrease the chances that they will follow you. Uh, with the backwalk, I have like a 9 over 10 uh, success rate at going and grabbing this without having anyone following me. So uh, it's really handy. And then uh, one thing that I like to do to not backwalk into the, into the, the middle hole is uh, I open on the side. If you open on the side, you always have the same camera. Uh, for those who don't know, when you open a door, you always get either right or left side camera. Uh, but here on the left is a wall. So the camera does not have the option. Camera has collision. Uh, the camera does not have the option to be on Link's left. So it's always going to be on Link's right. So from that angle, I flick down and it's going to get me to grind a little bit, which is going to avoid that hole. And then I can go and, uh, and do this. Okay. So that was a little bit of a, a piece of advice here uh, that I think is really cool. And then you have a toxic setup here to uh, grab so much on the edge that uh, that after that you can uh, you can you can pull the stuff all the way through. It's really crazy. Um, I suspect that it's slower. Uh, maybe it's faster. Maybe it's faster. Let's let's time it someday. <laughs> it's so not worth I still do it because I think it looks cool it's important everyone should know the possibilities of the entire cosmos and then we can do uh we can all choose what we want to do okay uh then 49 34 strat to not trigger redead what are we talking about 49. Forty-nine thirty-four. Music is still banging. Oh, there goes my stick problem. Oh yeah, this is from Dylan Meeble. Um, can I find this real quick? Uh, this is going to be impossible to find on YouTube. I think I'm gonna give up. Yo, Shadow Hey, Toxic. Welcome, welcome. Toxic, welcome to the slickest asphalt surfers. Uh, but yeah, um, he has a strat that... Oh my god, can I get to my gameplay feed? I was not showing you guys. Okay, so this is the room we're talking about. If you go and get this stick on flame, the redhead is always going to be talking to you. Whatever he's got to say, he's going to be saying it. There's a way around that. There's a way around that. I don't remember uh, the tech, but I'm going to just show what it revolves on. The idea is that when you hold a stick and <laughs> what a terrible example. When you hold a stick and you shield, the stick goes to the left. So he was doing something such as side up left, side up right, and the stick was pointing to the side and it was lighting it on fire and then he was going away and it wasn't triggering the redead. So I haven't taken the time to learn that. I think I should. Uh, but yeah, it can come in handy if you don't have the boomerang. And uh, it's quite a bit of a time save because uh, I think the redead scream is quite a while. Like, Yeah, that's like four seconds. It's like four guaranteed seconds. So I don't know how long the setup is, but it could potentially be worth. Okay. Let's move on. 5155 says nut. 
This is the video? Okay, let's watch it. So he's going over there. Oh, he's just YOLOing. Okay, see, I think he's getting pushed. Yeah, he just sneaks in. He's getting pushed by by this, like... Look how, like, the coffin is pushing him, and he's still holding up. And that's his, that's his angle and right-left position. It seems like that's what he's using. And then he probably has a cue, like, the edge of those two big things. Right-left, and he's off. Yeah, that's a quick setup. That's really, really good. Uh, GG, Dylan, let's go. Okay, so let's move on to 5150. Oh, yeah. Um, it's your video? Shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> Toxic. It's your video? Oh, my God. Toxic GG's. <laughs> GG's, I'm sorry. Very smart. Okay, let's put a comment. We're gonna boost that video. Uh, Toxic, thank you so much for coming up with that. <laughs> I don't know why I remember this being from Dill, but it's okay. Dylan is also smart. He's a, he's a nice person. Uh, so here, what the hell is going to choose to jump slash? Um, I think it's a weird choice when you have nuts equipped and you have 30 of them. I would honestly, uh, right as I get out, boom, nut. Nut right now, and then you can just go jump. Uh, it's probably very close, but... Uh, but yeah. Uh, if you're on a killing spree, you might want to go for that, but I don't really know. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that, like, this is a thing. Uh, yeah, here is something that I see pretty often. Uh, so you're doing something that is way smarter than what I usually see. Um, at this place, I see a lot of four side hops. One, two, three. And I see a lot of people doing a fourth one, which is completely useless. Uh, what I like to do here is input a side roll and and imp and go full input with up to uh, make it go forward. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, when you do a side hop and a side roll, you can you can make it go further up like this. So this is what I use. It goes like really straight to the door uh, instead of doing some kind of other box movement, which I think is good. Uh, wait, box movement is not good. But yeah, what you do is walk there. Uh, that's cool. I think it's uh, it's much smarter, but you could be benefiting from the speed of a roll. So uh, why not benefit from it? Then 5503 is oh yeah this why does everyone this box movement in sfm as job because uh glitches people said it's faster it's uh it's actually hard to make it be faster but uh, that's the way it is fanta sorry it's it's really hard to come close with uh with normal movement but uh anyway not the topic uh so here you want to go to the right um and we're going to see you walk and climb uh, a side hop would put you here so uh as soon as you enter 
like as soon as you're by the door, target side hop flick right will light the torch and you save about one second, I would say, maybe more. So yeah, that's just a quick tip here. Then 101.25 is the next thing we want to talk about. 101. At this point, I could 25. Oh, yeah. I was wondering why you completely abandoned the idea of side hopping onto that. Like, you just... We can, we can see that you are diving into the water. Like, you're committing to that. You had no will to do anything else. There was no way you were going to do anything else. Um... So I can understand that this side hop is, is is kind of unfriendly. I I do understand that. But I think it doesn't lose time to miss it. So why not go for it? And then um there is something that can I'm I'm going to try to help. Okay? So you go there and I think from here, it's pretty hard. Like, if you try to aim from here, it will sometimes miss. But the thing is, you can do it from here. Uh, and and it will work. Which is something that intuitively you would think like, Oh, I'm, I'm too low, I've missed. But no, it actually will go on it. So, uh, so yeah. But what the hell, I'm not saying you should go for the side hop. I'm just saying, like, this was your choice, and I'm a bit wondering why you took that choice. But it's sometimes, like, not going for the tech that saves five frames and just doing something that always is five frames slower than the optimal but is always stable, uh, sometimes that's the best thing to do. So for this, I would really consider YOLOing, you know, like just uh, just going super fast, uh, just doing something if it fails it fails but it will still be faster like by the way what I just did is slower uh, what you want to be doing is something like uh, like this and uh, what's gonna happen is that the side hop is gonna put you like some kind of like underwater and when you're here, what you can do is target what's just under my feet. You can uh, you can target that, and it uh, makes things really fast. That's what they used to do in uh, in the old Any Prejant. So uh, let's see. But even if you do that, you know, like this is pretty fast, and this is probably faster. Uh, is this slower? I don't know. This is slower. But yeah, it's, I just wanted to mention, like, you can get really deep under and still, uh, and still get on top of that, which, which makes things kind of fast. Is the intention to side hop twice and land on land and everyone messes it 100% of the time? No, it's slower to land on land because then you have this jump. Uh, the intention is to do something like that and get the and get the quick up here. Can I actually just do it once good? Yeah, that's the way you want to get it. That's exactly the way you want to get it with when you're underwater, you target the stuff, which is going to make Link's sideways momentum go straight forward. Uh, because when you target things, they, uh, can I do, damn. Anyway, this wall is not sticky. Uh, but yeah, when you target things, it shifts the momentum that Link goes to. Uh, it's really important for many things, but uh, we don't really have time to discuss this. Um, next thing is uh, what you're going to be doing here. So 
You're going right there. Okay, I have no problem with that. And then here I have a problem. Uh, because you're going to be aiming somewhere there. While this tree trunk is walkable. So uh, let's go on my game feed real quick. I should have parameter a boost so that I could just uh, just rush to it a little faster. Maybe going out there is faster. Let's try. Oh, come on. So all of this is walkable and I really like to do a back walk there because uh, it gives you time to write down your hints. So when you arrive at this one, I, I get an angle like here, back walk, it's going to back walk all the way up, get down, and the back walk will also get past this little corniche here. Okay? Because 825 is just that powerful. So it, it gives you a little bit of time to, uh, to do stuff. So go out there, cut that big stuff, and you will get there with a back walk. I really have the feeling that it is faster. What the fuck is this? I can't confirm, but uh, yeah, I have the feeling this is faster. Also, I agree. What the fuck is this? Uh, wait, I'm not showing you guys. <sighs> Sorry. So, uh, yeah, I was saying, we heard what the hell saying. What the fuck is this? Um, this is too many highlighted words. This is too many. Like, you might as well put the entire sentence in red at this point. But if you want to highlight something, uh, put, I don't know, just boulders and then water temple and everything else back in white. But Gilded Chess was wrong in chest size matches content. Who plays that? We're, uh, we're standard mains. Let's uh, let's be hateful to anything else. Um, I don't know why they changed it, but to me, I don't care that they say rolling boulders in the water temple. It's just this is too many red words. But that's that's another topic. What we were just saying is when you're after this corner, get an angle over there and back walk. It feels to me that it's faster. I could be wrong. I have never timed it. But it really feels like it would be faster, honestly. That's that's my personal take on this. Uh, 105.18 is going to be the angle climb strat. 105.18. Okay, so you just killed the skull and you're going to this... And um, what you can do is you target this wall and then you climb here, you target and then hold right, it's gonna grab and then you keep target until you get the skull and then you go left. And then Link is going to drop because at some point there's no more vines on the left. He's gonna get back the angle that you locked with target and because of that, he's going to be in a favorable angle in order to grab back this thing. So it's called angle climb. Uh, it's really fast. It's really handy. There are many setups for that. Uh, Toxic has a few. I have a few. Uh, just, uh, just pick your poison. But uh, yeah, targeting this and getting there is cool. You can do this after opening the chest. Uh, it's uh, it's it's really nice. Many options from that. Okay, uh, one o seven twenty. One o seven twenty. Oh, did I really bookmark this? Okay, uh, that's gonna be a detail. Like 
probably don't do it, but it's fun to mention. Okay, let's go on my uh, feed. Um, there's like, if you grab here, you see how link popped up. That's that's the cause. Like that's why in Dempe's race you can climb and jump slash and get on top. That's because of a pop like that, and you just jump slash when you're up. So this has an opportunity of you doing this, but if you do it, you're going to break your stick, which you don't want. So what you can do for this is you lock an angle beforehand and, uh, and then this angle will be given to you back in the pop so that you're not going to jump slash to the wall, but parallel to the wall and you're not gonna break your stick. Uh, this technique is used in a speedrun called Jotwa, jump off the watchtower and die. Um, it's, a, it's a very amusing run. Um, this probably saves like five frames, if it saves anything at all. It's just, it's just something to know. Um, you have a similar situation uh, in Adult River uh, you have a pop like that. You have a similar pop in Forest Temple. Uh, oh, you mean Task Climb? Yeah, Task Climb is just super log based. I have no idea. Uh, you could get the pop to have enough uh, directional influence to actually have Link walk without the jump slash, uh, which we call Task Climb because Task would do that. But uh, let's be honest, uh, we're we're nowhere near there. Uh, Tune the word record has task climb in the escape, which is nuts. Okay, uh, that's enough shitty text. Uh, now, one eleven o two, one eleven o two. I need to go on a little bit faster maybe with the text so that the video doesn't doesn't last forever. The dream would be a boat. So 11.02. Okay, yeah. So Oh my god, I forgot. I'm sorry. So this is where we're at. Um as you can see here, we're in a similar situation as just before. This is the pop that I was referring to. It's actually fairly easy to get task climb here. Um, so you could try to jump up and like get up and jump slash from that. Uh, something to consider is that you, you don't see it on what the hell's tracker, but he has the long shot right now. Uh, if you have the long shot, you can consider going over there and long shotting the top um, of the ladder. Uh, watch out, there will be current, so you will be moving. Uh, could also do the river shortcut with iron boots. That is very true. Uh, that is very true, which means uh, you go from down below, you climb this right here, and uh, I think if you climb with iron boots, that's enough. Um, there are weird ways to do things, but I think just climbing with iron boots should do the trick. And then you can you can long shot to up there. So yeah, thank you for reminding me that. I I just never think of this. I should learn it. Okay. Uh, one eleven fifty five is a really weird sequence, and side hop after because otherwise you're in a weird state. Oh yeah, that's the weird thing that I remember about. Okay, so you climb here and then side hop, because otherwise you can't pull hook. Like you're considered underwater in a weird, like probably considered as floating. And now with the overworld keys and overworld skulls and like what the fuck is so okay you play sun song 
And now, <laughs> after this, so you're here, and where you want to go is about that. Like, you want to use that angle. But for some reason, you're going there. And it looks like this is a habit of yours. I've seen you do that plenty of time. I don't understand. You're going there. When your objective is to go there. And there is plenty of room to land out there. So you're going to go through that jump. And then climb that shit. When you could like... Honestly, you would have landed somewhere around there, and at this time, you would be over there. So, there was no need to use that angle. Um, that was that was one of the only movement stuff that, um, that I thought about. Okay, 112.50. It's uh, really close. Oh, yeah, 112.50 is something we talked about in the Discord recently. Um, if you want to go for Mito skip at that point, uh, I'm not even sure you're going to go for it, but you can, while floating up, you just target that wall yeah, that is in front of you and then turn around and it would have been the angle. So, uh, that's, that's an option, but yeah, you're not going to do it, but I just, I just wanted to mention it because I think it's uh, it's neat. Okay, and now we have a jump to 117. 117, what's going to happen is you're going to go too deep in the water. You didn't know you could land over there. Yeah, you can. It's, uh, it's no big deal. It's going to save you a lot of time. Um, at fishing, you're going to go too deep in the water. Like, this is about how deep you want to go in the water, like not further. The fish is going to follow you anyway, so you don't want to go any further and you go for a bath. And then this is because you threw the bait and never stopped it with A, so it goes full distance, which loses quite a bit of time. But uh, you're going to be a pro at fishing really soon. Ouais, euh, tout à l'heure, on a fait vraiment un cours particulier de Juan Olaf euh, sur le child fishing. OK, uh, 123.30 is a cool tech. Uh, I suspect you've you've seen it before. But OK, so here you don't have the Gerudo card yet, I think. And you have the long shot, and you want to check your like. Imagine you want to check Gerudo Fortress. You probably want to uh, get to the top chest. And with the long shot, I suspect that like getting caught first and getting the getting the long the um, the top of Fortress chest like this is faster. So. Let's go there. Uh, where is it? Is it Overworld? Gerudo Fortress? From 111213. One, one, oh my god. Uh, from Captured Second Time. Now, um, I'm going to equip uh, the long shot. Because I'm going to need it. And I'm going to show a setup. This setup is not from me. I had done a setup. Uh, but the setup I had was quite complex. And uh, a little bit shitty. Um, there's a setup that doesn't use ESS turns. Feel free to use it. Uh, but it's slow. It's from Skyward. So when you're here. You backwalk in a way that you're going to be in the corner. Then target. One ESS to the right. Side hop, side roll, uh, and then side hop again, and then hook shot extension, and you can catch the chest. I think I missed the extension, but yeah, 
Uh, so if you succeed the extension, you catch the chest, and this is pretty fast. Uh, something that you could do is, for example, here, I have hookshot in hand. It's very important to have hookshot in hand. You will always have hookshot in hand if you're here, but just re remember that. Uh, it changes all of the frame data. Um, if you press hookshot and release target during the side hop, um, during this, basically during the start of the side hop, you have five frames. You get something like this, which gets you a weird camera, but it does the extension inside the side hop. Um, let me show why. Wait. I might do untargeted side hop so we see better. So look at Link's feet. When you land, so that's the first frame that you land. Um, on the next frame, you will move. You see how like there was a slight move? Basically, pulling the hook shot at that time is going to lock you into... I'm not even sure what I'm saying is true. <laughs> but I imagine that this little sliding is uh, is getting you an extension. You know, like it's adding, it's adding a little bit of like where you can hook shot, and so this actually does a hook shot extension inside of a side hop, and with hook shot in hand, you have five frames to do that. It's a technique that is very used to skip the Runia statue in Goron City. So yeah, yo, what's up, Gip? Hidden techniques, Kirox, not really. Um, you can find it on Back in Echo's channel if you would want. Like, uh, Back in Echo is the god setup maker. Uh, Grand City statue hookshot. And uh, as you can see, so he's getting a hookshot extension from the side hop. And as you can see here, nothing in hand is frame perfect. With sword, you have two frames. Hammer, BGS, and stick, you have three frames. And with hookshot in hand, you have five frames. So you have to remember that. Well, we're trying to record a video, Gib. Du coup, c'est tout en anglais. So yeah, that's uh, that's one technique. I just wanted to talk about that um, that little technique to uh, to maybe get the um, the top of fortress chest first, which is uh, in my eyes a very interesting tech. <laughs> Anything on back in Echo or Blinny's channel is essentially hidden techniques, unless you're willing to dig through one thousand videos. I think it's true for Blini's channel, it's true for Juke's channel, for Back in Echo, it's much, much better um, uh, things done. Okay, so, um, what else? Oh yeah, here. Here, quick thing uh, that I noticed uh, I'm going to show you on, on my gameplay, uh, is that, so look at my input viewer. So when you do this, and then like, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with quick draw, but uh, uh, this is quick draw, like quick drawing sword. It's done by pressing B and then R without target like this. So if you... Like, you double-click the hook to get the Gerudo. And then hold down and quick draw sword. It will turn around and draw the sword, which is really handy in the situation that what the hell is in. And I suggest that um, this is what you go for when you're doing this. Uh, especially if you're at low health, it can avoid you taking damage. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have a hook shot, uh, you can throw a chew on this and it usually works. Uh, if it doesn't work, you can complain to Kirox. It was his idea. 
Holy shit, thank you, T2, for gifting a sub to Fanta Tanked. Fanta, welcome to the slickest Asphalt Surfers. What a boss. Uh, next thing is going to be GTG Silver Rupees. Uh, I know what the hell has been waiting for this moment all of his life. Uh, it's finally time to get things done. Uh, here we go. Uh, I think it's better for me to warp there because otherwise it's just a pain. Or do I have Gerudo card right now? No, I don't have Gerudo card. Okay, let, let's warp there. So I think it's considered as a donjon. Uh, so what the hell is doing some weird stuff that I don't even want to talk about? Uh, it's... It's not what you want to do. It's it's not as bad as you could think, but it's not what you want to do. Uh, no one wants to do this. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to have to kill those guys, so sorry. I'm going to have to... Okay, so what I like to do is after I open this chest, I like to quick draw the hook shot here um, because you're gonna be on you're gonna be on a timer um, and you're especially going to be on a cycle from a boulder that you ideally want to avoid. Um, I might show a clip of me succeeding. To get that god cycle because it's very difficult i usually do not get it um like i have a three percent success rate at this but uh let's move on and let's go with some tips so the first thing i do is i roll upright and uh, i target somewhere around here and then side hop side roll turn around pull hook shot aim all the way up shoot the hook shot hold down and jump slash what this does is that you're going to skip those flames without taking a hit that is the big advantage of this setup is that you skip those flames without taking that knockback that ruins the cycle so uh in my eyes that's that's very important if you have BGS, you can still avoid knockback, but for some reason, uh, you know, people equip BGS and it's, uh, it's a pain. Then what you want to do is go all the way there, and then you want to get that rupee. By the way, this rupee does not work uh, if you're using hover boost. You have to jump. Uh, sorry. So you have to jump. Then I prefer to release stick before landing here to not get the automatic roll uh, from landing here and then um, what you would ideally want to do is have a tiny bit of an angle like that but way more tiny something like this so that you you see how like the fact that I went into the hole uh, made it that I avoided the boulder that was coming. That's what you want to get at the very end. I'm not even sure I can do that because I have the text up uh, and having the text up really sucks. But uh, let's see how close we can get. So this is probably too sharp of an angle. Okay, first try. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so yeah, so that's the ideal way you want to be doing GTG. I'm so happy I, <laughs> I actually succeeded. Um, but that's that's the idea of uh, of what you want to do. 109 is your time goal on the timer. Yeah, the thing is like. Um, 
the setup that I do at the beginning, I think loses me time, but it's just saves me so much consistency. I've seen people like just wing it and then try to aim here. But I think on an average, like you will save time because you don't have to aim with the hook shot and you won't be hit by the flame. So side up, side roll, turn around. Uh, the setup in my eyes feels very worth. It is crazy difficult to, uh, to be faster than this setup. Okay. So uh, let's go back. Uh, oh, then is the like, like room. So like, likes, uh, yeah, God, like fight before. So you're going to kill the like, likes perfectly. And then for some reason, you're going to choose to go there. Um, I doubt this is a good choice. What you can do is once you kill that one, you go open this chest. This chest already exists. You go open that one, and what you can do is target the chest. I'm not going to show that. Uh, you can target the chest before opening, so target open. And then you're going to be two side hops away. Hold left, press A. You're going to climb this. Keep holding left, open that chest. You can also target open that chest, but it's not as crucial. And then I think it's up right, up left or left flick into a side hop left, and you will land here uh, before uh, before the cutscene start. Like the cutscene will start while you're in the air, so you will have open this, open this, and you will already be on your way to uh, opening this one. I think this is the ideal movement. Uh, there might be a better one, but I don't know about it. And uh, first time I saw that was on Sanzo, a uh, French player. So yeah, so you managed to go there and then I don't know what you do from there. Yeah, you, you were not able to move further. So uh, that was a little bit slower. Then uh, let's see what you do from this one. I really like to target this one because if you target it, um, it's exactly a straight back walk line to the door so you can backflip up and then back walk to the door you can just walk between them if you're lazy like me you could <laughs> you could it's an option it's an option you guys choose whatever you prefer I'm just I'm just here to propose um, and uh, and most likely it's it's not always the the best thing to do okay so that was the like like room uh double shot corner and side hop void that's in a few seconds okay so when you start this you get in this position uh close to this ledge which allows you to shoot this eye and then this eye you have the exact same symmetrical system on the other side okay which means only one of the sides will work and you have to be close to the corner. So if you were here, I don't know why the, the pole is disappearing, but you have to be here on the left side of the pole, close to the edge, and you will be able to shoot both of the other targets, okay? Instead of uh, doing a, a semi-Marco strat. Uh, and then after this, uh, I timed this myself. The fastest thing after that is to side hop. Um, it's, we're talking frames, but uh, grabbing uh, was slower. So uh, yeah, side hopping off is it's just really fast, really, really fast. Um, yeah, maybe if you're, if you're unsure, time it for yourself, but I think uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure what you did was slower because you flicked left, targeted, waited for the camera to set behind you and then back walked and then you pressed A, which is, you know, an input to time. So why do all that? Okay, cool. We're done with the first page. I have 
one and a half more to go. Uh, 132. 132 is something I showed you recently uh, during gameplay. Um, there's a few uh, box movement that you can do here. I think most of them are bad, but the only one that I really like is the one after this. Okay, wherever you open this door, you can target side hop twice to the right and press A. It will open the chest. Um, I have the feeling a perfect roll to the right into opening would be faster by like two frames or something of that idea. Like I don't have a frame counter in my eyes. But the thing is uh, the roll can fail. The roll can definitely fail in term of distance, in term of uh, you can bonk the chest. It can it can be too far to the right or to the left. Uh, the two side hops are just so reliable. It's unbelievable. Uh, so yeah, did you just walk? You rolled, right? Yeah, you you rolled. Um, but I think two side hops are, are really handy for this one. So I just wanted to, um, to mention this now, 137.05. Okay. So a little jump in time. Uh, oh yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is an instant of something that I will show even if you didn't need it. Uh, because I have the feeling that it's not very uh, often seen. Where was it? Yeah, you were here and you had the long shot, so it was really easy for you to, uh, to get to there. Um, if you only have the hook shot, there is something pretty cool. Uh, so let's go to the donjon. And uh, and let's just show that tech once, and that's cool. Okay. Um, is it here? Yeah, it's here. What if I just land here okay cool uh, I'm gonna kill that guy but it's unnecessary I'm just gonna kill it for uh, demonstration purposes so um, you want to get one of those vines which is barely possible with the hook shot and uh, you have everyone going to uh, the top of this little hat and doing this uh, this this thing which uh is cool the the disadvantage of this is that you're going to have to do one two three four five six so you're six away from something that is optimal um see here there's a white line white vertical line close to a black delimitation of stones it's pretty easy to see like once you know what you're looking for it's this okay uh do the same setup from here backflip dry roll hold up boom and you just saved yourself six climbs to the right so uh that's a quick tip uh it works really nicely and uh uh, yeah, that's cool. I, I don't see it very often. So even though it wasn't in your seed, I felt like this was a decent idea to show it. So let's just go on. Uh, now we go on to the bubble fight. Um, for the bubble fight, so I'm going to uh, list all of the new text from Toxic here. Um, when you start the bubble fight, you want to roll up left. This is toxic oxygen strat, which is perfect. Uh, roll up left, which is going to bait the bubble to come with you. Uh, and then you nut and crouch stab, which is going to make the, sh the chest pop. And you're going to be right in front of it. 
Um, should I show it? Uh, um, okay, so I need to store a jump slash. Get there. And use nuts. So, roll up left. And what's good with that is that the chest is going to pop in front of you. So you just have to open it. Because otherwise, otherwise you're going to be right there when the chest pops and you have some kind of awkward walking to do, uh, which is really hard to optimize. And you're losing more time to this than you are to rolling right there before uh, attacking the stuff. Ça va, tranquille, Kylo. On fait une petite review, on essaie d'aider un pote. You know, like before I was doing something like this, but I think this is slow. Um, I've also seen, I've also seen stuff like, uh, people manage to do a side hop after the jump slash. I don't know how they do that, but, uh, I've seen that work, but honestly, uh, what toxic has been bringing up is just way too good. Uh, roll up left, turn around, nut, crouch stab. This is perfect. It, it works wonder. So uh, no, no need to uh, use anything else in my opinion. Okay, let's move on. So we'll just watch what you did. Uh, quick draw, jump slash, frame perfect tech. Nice, nice, nice. Good stuff. And then you have this awkward movement to go to the chest, which is uh, what I consider the, the time loss here. Um, bubble fight. Uh, okay, 38.25. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is one more instance of something we've been talking about uh, just before. So here you can recognize the same kind of stuff that we had in Kokiri Forest near the pond and in Lake. So effectively on this thing, you can press A then B and you will get a pop-up jump slash to get on top of that uh, big block in just in one go. So, um, uh, this is a small optimization, and I think it's uh, it's really good. Okay, next thing is 139. Oh, yeah. Um, basically, the thing is here, you don't know how many times you're going to push the block, and you're going to be losing time because you're going to keep pushing when you should be gone. And you're going to do that on both of the blocks. So that's two time loss for kind of just a shitty tech. It's, you have to decide if you want to care about that or not, because at this moment uh, of the seed, you were uh, thinking of how the logic is, where you want to go and things like that, which could be so much more crucial than the half a second you're gonna save by counting how many times you push them. But I'm still throwing it in there. Um, it's, it's 12 for both. Uh, both of them is 12 and for the ground jump tech that you can do if you have the hover boots, it's seven, okay? So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven if you have uh, hover boots and bombs. You want to stop at seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You should be gone by now. And you kept pushing a little bit. Uh, then here, I think the, the movement with the side hop is really good because you can also buffer the grab. Um, I don't know how many people... Uh, Watching this are comfy with uh, uh, with me talking about grab buffers. Um, can I get? Is this it? Oh yeah, it's it. Uh, 
Okay, so the way it works is like, uh, so look at my input viewer. I, I hold A, I'm pressing it, and if I just run to the block, Link will grab it as soon as he's available to grab it. So this is grab buffer. Anything that you can pull and push in this game, you can buffer the grabbing so that you make sure you're not running against it before being able to grab it. You will just grab frame one because you are buffering it. Um, it's not a pause buffer, it's a buffer like the ones we use in fighting games. So uh, what I like to do here is uh, roll two side hops and in the second side hop, I just keep holding. So yeah, when you input the second side up, you keep holding and uh, and that's it. Then uh, that's the next thing that I'm going to be showing is once you shoot this, uh, by the way, I like to do something like this and then shoot with target. I have no idea if that's fast or not. I just think it looks cool. Um, okay. When you open that chest, uh, what I've seen you do is something like this. I'm not exactly sure, but it feels slow. Uh, what I like to do is quick draw, side hop, jump slash. Uh, oh, by the way, I learned that. Yeah, you can quick draw into the side hop, but that's probably a little off purpose here. Like it's maybe a little too tech. But yeah, so quick draw side hop jump slash and you get there. And what I like from this too is that uh, you get those two quick rolls that get you to uh, like if you if you get two squished rolls like two rolls that are too close you land in a good spot to cut that corner um i wasn't able to find like a, a decent movement uh with this like you had to do something like that and then you end up rolling the corner which i don't like so um so yeah that was a thing uh and then Oh yeah, last thing. Uh, oh, shut up, Navi. Last thing is um, is also something that I don't see many people doing, and uh, I really wonder why. Is when you're done here, what I like to do is as soon as I pop out of this corner is pull the bow out, shoot. And like, this is going to make like, my camera is already looking straight to the door. Like by definition, I just shot the eye that's on top of it. So my camera is looking exactly at this. Uh, so I can just flag down and back walk. And it triggers it twice. Nah, that never happened to me. So you can shoot immediately and then and then back walk. You ever had that, Fanta? And I've seen so many people shoot the eye and oh wait, no no no. They they go super forward so that they're super vulnerable to the bubbles. They shoot the eye and then they jump. Uh we talked about it earlier. Jumping is quite slow. So it's both slow and puts you in a in a tight spot. Yeah, don't worry, what the hell. Uh, I'll, I'll save the highlight. I'll keep going as if you were here, and uh, it's going to be fine. Don't you worry. Uh, thank you so much for uh, letting me uh, use and, and doing all of that content. Um, I, I hope it helps. Um, I have no idea when I'm going to be done with that, by the way. Uh, it might be a three-hour video. I'm so sorry.
so yeah, so I think shoot then back walk is probably, it's a fair option. Like shoot and then back walk. Because the cam is going to be like directly pointing right there. So that's, that's the thing. Hey, what's up, Wooly? Amigos de la Playa. Now, uh, next thing to do, uh, pull fight text. Uh, so let's go back on what the hell's gameplay and pull fight text. I am not a big technician in this 142 something. So I also enjoy shooting an arrow here and then stun. I don't like doing this jump slash because it makes things super tight for the next crouch stab. But yeah, okay. And then you have a two frame window um, to get that, um, that stun lock. Um, I could show, uh, do we see it well? The thing is you have interlaced footage and I think we don't see it too well. But if you watch at the, the lamp that he's holding, the lamp will tilt like this. It go. Yeah, you don't see it really well. Should I should I just go and do it on my end? Anyway, um, I won't do it. But there's a two frame window and you can use the lamp tilting as a visual cue to when you want to uh, crouch stab again. I think it's easier if you go up to the Poe and then start with a crouch stab so that you're really ready for the next one. Starting with a jump slash, I don't know what the timing is like. And I've never tried it. Uh, although, the, the best thing to do is to, like the fastest thing to do is to not use an arrow here and it is to go up to the Poe. The Poe is going to attack you, either shield or get hit. And then you can crouch stab, move, crouch stab, move, crouch stab. And it results in you being able to push the Poe somewhere there so that you are exactly where the chest can spawn. The problem with this tag, I really enjoy this tag. This is what I do. I think it's the most consistent. Um, is that right now you're super far away from the Poe and you have to use that knot to bring it back and then you have to uh, use two times uh, for uh, damage attack. So um, yeah, you may wanna watch, I think Marco does it optimal. Uh, he runs to the Poe, gets hit, crouch stab, runs after him, crouch stab, runs after him, crouch stab. Uh, getting the stun lock of two frame window um, feels more difficult when you have to also move and adapt to where you influenced uh, the Poe to go. But I just wanted to mention that uh, as far as I know, this is the super fast stuff. You can do the last attack as a vertical slash. It's supposed to make it slightly easier. Oh, okay. So that's why, like, the vertical slash does two damage, which is the same as an arrow shoot. So that's why the arrow shoot does two. So it's a 10 health stuff. Okay. And then you do four and four. Okay. So you could run up to it, crouch stab, crouch stab, and then slash. And then what Fanta is, is saying is that the slash probably has a lot more active frames uh, which is the amount of time during which your sword has a hitbox. The hit, the the window that the Poe is vulnerable. Uh, the Poe is probably vulnerable on only one frame because if I remember correctly, a crouch stab has two frames of a hitbox. It's either active frames or just a longer reach. Okay, sweet. Yeah, definitely check it out on some glitchless runners. You can, uh, as a reference, I think, 
Um, Danny B has been uh, dominating Litchless forever, and recently Chef Bear got the world record and has a very difficult run to beat. But Chef Bear is more into being consistent, while Danny uh, is more into uh, being up to date. Uh, okay, so that was about Po Fight. Um, now, 145.00, quick draw and fast cycle. Oh, yeah, that's probably the frozen ice skip, isn't it? One hour, 45 minutes. So, yeah, during this corridor, uh, before Navi sets on those bubbles, you want to target and quick draw the, the bow. It's going to give you uh, more time for the next thing, which is kind of tight. Uh, and then you want to open this door on the left because those doors don't center you. Uh, I don't know if that's a 1.0 thing. Probably not. But those doors, they, they give you back the position that you had. So if you were on the right, they'll put you on the right. So open it on the left. You want to be on the left afterwards. So uh, that's something to, uh, to keep in mind. So you open it on the left and then you hold slightly left to up jump to this, jump to this, and then you want to be standing right there and you want to stop really, really fast. Uh, the way you can do that is press shield. So Link is going to crouch and this is going to kill all of his momentum. This is a very handy way to like go to the very edge and really quickly kill all of the momentum uh, horizontal that you had. So it's a really good way, and then uh, once you kill the momentum, flick to the right, hold the bow. Usually I just hold right and um, and try to shoot the eye. You will have one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted. Um, anyway, so yeah, so you can try to do that. If you fail, it's no big deal. You just jump on the next platform as you've just seen what the hell do, and uh, and you can try again. Uh, my voice is kind of running out. I'm going to go get some water. Okay. So yeah, that was the um, that was the the few tips about uh, the fast cycle, and then something that uh, toxic oxygen is gonna be really really mad about is uh, is to see what's gonna happen Why here. So he I... he failed to jump to the other platform. That's fine. Nobody cares that he failed, but uh, f this little ledge, if you run from here you can get a jump and the jump can reach to grab one of those platforms so there's actually no need to go and climb that ladder which is going to make toxic really mad uh, so usually when you fail you want to go over there you want to go over there somewhere and just try to grab the next wagon okay uh, jumping from here to here will be enough. You will grab one of those and then you can just jump onto that. And it's uh, potentially a lot faster and uh, uh, makes people look like uh, yeah, you, need to turn you, quickly, you know what you're doing. Non just kidding. That's not uh, what that's are you not doing here? Okay, this is perfect. Okay, now when you land here, just... <laughs> Don't go there. Where are you going? This is the, <laughs> this is the square that you want to go to. Okay, <laughs> I have no idea why such an incredibly good player does this, <laughs> but it's okay. Like overall, you're getting the same cycles, so why not?
But uh, yeah, I think it's if it's not slightly faster, it makes things easier. So yeah, after the recoil, you landed here with the recoil. So you just have to move one up. And with Bigoran Sword, you usually land on that. All right. So okay, that's how that's how this this works. Uh, yeah. And then I asked you recently, like, why you use the hookshot strat on Amy, um, and what the hell answered that? Um, because he thinks it it looks cool. Which is a perfectly viable decision. Like, if you think something looks cool, then it's cool to me. Uh, personally, I think I use a shield from basically the same position. But what I do is shoot an arrow, which puts Amy right there. Is that Amy? I think that's Amy. Uh, puts Amy right there. And then I do the exact same thing as I do with the other pose. Uh, nut, two crouch stab. And then a uh, side hop to the left during the during the animation lag that she is uh, going through flames. That's Amy. Okay. Okay. Cool. Nice. That's uh, that's gonna make it look like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, okay. Now let's go to Phantom Ganon Strat, the best guarded secret from the crew, Dini. I'm um, not going to explain how to do one cycle, but, um, but like basically trying one cycle would just mean you would be closer here and you would try to shoot an arrow and then you would try to slash him, which would pull out the sword. Uh, so if you fail it, it actually doesn't lose any time, so I would consider going for it. Um, if you go for one cycle Phantom Ganon, uh, this is going to sound silly, but uh, I suggest you do it as I do it, which means without targeting uh, Phantom Ganon to shoot the arrows, I think it makes it considerably easier. Um so yeah um think about learning it and uh if you get to learn it uh get in touch with me i'll give you my tips but uh i don't want to explain that in this video i'll one day i'll make a tutorial maybe maybe just maybe it's one of the strats i don't really know if i want to do a tutorial or not uh anyway so yeah, the PJ fight, and then and then you played really really well for quite a while. Uh, until this happened, you opened the door, and <laughs> I don't know what what you just did. The <laughs> it's funny because like the shield flicks here make me think that this is what you usually do and that's where that's where i judge <laughs> second worst room of ot okay i'm gonna give you guys all of the tips about how to get that room really nice so you side hop right flick down and back walk the order of things being side hop first and then flick down back walk is important because of right left camera we talked about it earlier the thing is the camera you see how the camera is there and it's rotating to the left of link this is when you want to input target and side hop don't wait for the camera to be behind link anticipate it you are available like link is available to be controlled by your controller uh, before the camera is behind Link. This is what causes the most mistakes in this room. It's people side hopping way too late. Uh, once you get used to like anticipating this, like you see how the camera turns, this is your cue. This is what puts you in the rhythm 
to doing the side hop at a good timing. Um, I remember uh, you showing that strat to Inup, and I was like, yeah, be careful because it's tight. But the thing is, like, Inup knows so well the mechanics, he knew exactly when Link was available. And he did it like five times in a row, perfect. And he was like, it's not even tight. Um, so it got me laughing a lot because it's not tight if you know when Link is available. And Link is available a lot earlier than you would think because if you wait for the camera to be completely behind him, you lost like five frames, which is the window of margin that you had for that trick. So side hop, flick down, back walk. Uh, if you get uh, inverted camera, that sucks. I agree. Uh, you're going to fail. And what I do in this case is, since you know that for this one, this one that is going over there when you start backwalking, it's going to be tight. It's almost going to catch you. You can wait for the next cycle and you go just like when it starts to go so that you're kind of going to be close to be touched by that one, you know, like and you think you can take more margin actually. And that's that's your backup in this case. But yeah, this this is bad. If you want to just run, you run to the left as soon as you enter the door. That's how that's how it works. I think so. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. There's either right or left. I'm pretty sure it's left. But if you just want to run straight forward, you can run left. And uh, and that will do if you don't want to use the side hop back walk. Uh, and it's not, it's not even that slow. Uh, then you're going to do something, something. Yeah, like the, the chances that you actually get quick grab compared to uh, having the setup I posted recently. It's left. Okay, okay. So it was left. Thank you, Toxic. Um, yeah, quick grab Morpha this way. I, I think it's hard. Uh, posted a video recently. Maybe watch it once or twice. And um, you'll see like it's, uh, it's pretty consistent. So... I trust you, you'll get it, and then never miss it. Now, uh, 2.07, which is a more than 12-minute jump. I watched all of your trials, and you were just doing things that were faster than what I knew about, and uh, your movement was really nice. Trials is mostly movement. So, uh, so yeah, um, had nothing to say about the trials, just uh, GG's. Uh, that was really, really sick gameplay. So uh, I'm at 154.43, and I'm going to jump at 207.45. With um, This is going to be movement-related, but uh, this is a very common um, mistake, I would say. Uh, we have that uh, in speedrunning too, but... If you have Kokiri Tunic and you don't have Goron Tunic, you want to be going to the side so that you don't lose health. If you have the Goron Tunic, you don't need to do that. But you will have muscle memory making you do this. But since you're one of the best players in the world, you might as well know that a straight line is what you want to follow. So if you have Goron Tunic, don't hesitate to like go a little further before you take the, the jump and then walk on the lava just so that you draw you draw a straight line. Is that present to draw? Yeah. Um, yeah, go on a straight line to where you want to go. I'm gonna be saying the same thing in a little bit. Uh, yeah, you did that setup, which is cool. Uh, it looks insanely hard, but apparently you got this probably from Hondo. I know you've been running Hondo. And then you go in there, and then um, I have a problem with this. Because first off, if you turn the camera right now, you will never make the cycle right there. Turning the camera is what loads the platforms out there. So if you turn the camera right now, you're dead. Like, there's no way you're going to make the cycle. And let's just, let's just watch it. 
okay it's going it's it's gone by the time you arrive there it's it's just gone and then you arrive here and you decide to backwalk on the lava which to me like you just did half of the room as if you didn't want to take any damage and you're sacrificing time to not take any damage and now you're doing the second half of this room considering that you have the Goron Tunic and not caring about lava or damage. So um, to me, there, there's a problem and, uh, and I will show you a back walk that I think is really, really lovely. It's not even optimal, but it's what I like best. Uh, Dungeon Fire Temple from Crater. Okay, uh, where's my game feed? Right there. Uh, we're gonna put the G tunic. Yeah, let's put a cool shield too. Okay, so yeah, we can maybe show, but so I was trying to avoid those two jumps, and then I went for a straight line. Okay, so here uh, multiple options when you exit this room. Uh, let's get a safe state. What I prefer to do is something Juke showed me is I go target this and then backwalk. And when I'm out of the corridor, I side up twice to the right. It's really not precise. And then I backwalk forever. Uh, this might not work. It did work. And then when I see this one on the right, I know it's time to roll here. And I'm right there. Uh, which is really handy. It's like, it's super, super handy. Um, if you want to not take damage, you could go for something like this. So as you can see, the platform is there for me because I called it by not watching it. And this is the route that they do for 1 16th of a heart so that they don't take any damage. Okay. So you have to not watch the stuff. Uh, then there is something that Glitchless does. I don't really remember what they do. They do some kind of a back walk up until there. And then they might be doing another one. I'm not really sure. But uh, they do everything they can to avoid those two side hops, which uh, feels a bit overkill to me. The camera is consistent. Is it? Is it not just like this? It might be something like that, but I find it overly complicated. I what I really enjoy is hold up, target this. As soon as I'm out, two side ups, and then I can think of something else here. I can think like, hey, how many keys do I have? Uh, should I just count my stuff? One block to the right, second block to the right, it's time. And uh, and I'm right there. So uh, if you have Goron Tunic, you want to be thinking of stuff like this. Now, um, I'm going to be talking about... Um, I'm going to be talking about what you do when you get out of here, which is a little bit of the same as what we talked about before, is you're going to have that kind of movement... Uh, sorry, homie. You're going to have that kind of movement, but uh, if I place Link here, um, you're going over there when the start of the bridge is out there. So actually, like, the best thing is to draw a straight line, which means go that way. If you have the Goron Tunic, you have to take advantage of that. It's it, This is very, very small time saves, but Take advantage of it. Draw a straight line to where you want to go. That's what you want to do. If you don't have the Goron Tuning, that's a different topic. Uh, also, that jump, uh, you might have seen speedrunners use that jump right there. Uh, that jump is not for speed. That jump is for time stop in case they have very few hearts. It gives them more time to shoot uh, on the next room. So that jump is not fast. Uh, fast movement would 
uh, get there, cut the corner, roll, and and go right there. Okay. So uh, I've seen um, a few people uh, being confused, for example, in getting less about should they do this jump or not. So uh, the answer is no. Uh, go straight if Goran Tunic back wall. Go straight if Goran Tunic green room. Okay, green room is one of my favorite rooms in Fire Temple. Um, it's it's a very important room in my eyes. It's probably not a very important room for everyone, but at least I think it's a cool one, and it's kind of tech. So uh, so we may want to take a little bit of a look into it. Um, I could show you what 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 the hell is going to be doing. I'm just I'm just going to show it to you guys uh, with my gameplay. So what what the hell is going to do is he's he's going over there because he wants to grab that and then he's going to side hop on top and then roll. I don't like that side hop. I don't like that side up. It's backtracking. It's going like you just got further from where you wanted to go, basically. Or or maybe you just moved in a parallel way to where you wanted to go. Uh, which I don't enjoy. Um if you flick up left, you can do two side hops and just grab. So I think this is much more efficient. You still get the side hop that uh, bumps you up, and then uh, and then you can arrive here. Now, um, I think the strat with the bomb, where you drop the bomb, you side up left. Um, I think this is really cool. So uh, I recommend you guys check it out. Otherwise, you have this tech. This is the glacial jump when you don't have explosives. Um, I like to buffer that strat so that I don't need to uh, to aim. Uh, this is probably a silly decision if you have the hook shots. Don't do it, but just in case. Uh, so you hold right and check out Link's feet, how like they're close to each other and they're going to be separate on next frame, on this frame. And on this frame, you input up. So uh, it's a one frame trick and uh, you get on top of the of the block. Um, I don't think it's really useful. Just wanted to show it just so that, you know, it's it's out there. Otherwise, you could turn to the right and do the same thing that you do in Serious Forest Meadow. Uh, aim a little more right, target, dry roll, hold up left immediately after the A press of the dry roll. And you will get on top of that block with literally almost no effort. Uh, it's just like the the aiming. Um, I always feel like I prefer to buffer a frame that I'm holding straight right before. It feels more consistent than aiming somewhere between here and here. But uh, I very likely am wrong on this. This is personal preference. Uh, green room jump first. What did I mean? to 1150 okay let's go take a look at this we're back on what the hell's gameplay and i'm going to go to 211 uh oh yeah you had a, a really weird routing of this room because you wanted the skull first but i'm not going to discuss this um yeah a little tip about this this is a scary room if you don't have the hovers on um, what I enjoy doing here is, uh, so the camera was facing this, you just jump straight forward, straight forward, you go get Link in the middle here, and then once you're out there in the middle, you shoot the eye with the bow. Um, what's going to happen after is that the cutscene will always, no matter where you are, it will place the camera as looking to the door so um, if you're in the middle here you shoot the bow then the camera looks into the door you just have to hold up and roll and you will go to the door so 
that's kind of like a setup ish movement that makes it uh, less scary to uh, to walk around that room because uh, as you can see here, we're gonna take a few precautions. Um, that was that was quite fast. Let's be honest, but you know, um, maybe if you want to use something else, I just told you what I use. Um, okay, so jump first, and now two fifteen twenty five side up side roll. What does that mean? 2.15. Oh, yeah. Um, there are many setups from there. So that... Um, so that's at Pierre. That's Pierre Chest. Once you're at Pierre Chest and you want to keep going with Deep Fire, you have many options. Uh, one of the easiest options is uh, from here you flick up target the chest side hop left side roll untarget retarget during the side roll and then basically it's behind you you could do many backflips i think it's like three or four and then you will land in the room that we were explaining that has those narrow paths uh, you will land right in front of the door that you need to open to keep going so that's pretty handy i think um, don't quote me on that. I've never tried, but I think it's not too hard if you know where you have to jump. It's not too hard to just like YOLO a jump over there. Uh, and maybe you can jump to somewhere and jump slash. I have no idea, honestly. But um, yeah, I think it might be worth if you're. I mean, what the hell is looking to make number one spot? in season four or like my as this should be his objective so yeah maybe you want to take a few seconds and just check how that feels um could be a pretty neat time save because uh, right now what you're going to be doing probably loses about 20 seconds maybe 30 so uh that's a lot that's a real lot um now okay let's go on Oh, oh yeah here okay this is this is really really neat um here is a really awkward corridor of fire temple because logic movement logic would tell you uh i'm gonna use rolls because four rolls makes you walk before you open the door five rolls bonks so you're exactly in the zone that backwalk is not worth or like backwalk is barely worth if you had the perfect angle from entering but upon entering the right or left camera fucks it up so you won't have it so you would need to target first before turning around and then backwalking but there's something else um Still when you open the walking. door by facing uh look on those frames uh i'm not exactly sure when but those frames you are facing the next room and it it loads the actors in the next room during you opening we're gonna have another instance of that in shadow temple for the fan room so actually you're gonna have everything be on a different cycle if you're back turned before opening the door and you don't retarget so uh, this is a very good place to make the cycle easier if you're back turned you won't have problems with that flamethrower just being exactly in your way. The flamethrower is going to be delayed, so you will be able to go before, which is really nice. And then after this, uh, there is a super cool setup. Uh, I should probably show it. Uh, there's a super cool setup from Juke that um, is super fast and it's so much faster than what we're going to be watching here 
So uh, yeah, let's watch what, what the hell is going to be doing. He's going to uh, skip this with a back walk and then for some reason doesn't want to skip the other one. So he's doing that weird stuff here, and for some reason he's not doing the the, desert first. the boost out there, and he's just going here. Um, okay, let's go and show real quick uh, what Juke setup is. Uh, I'm really scared that I don't find the room. Uh, this might be it. Okay, so yeah, that's probably it. I enter back turned, which makes the cycles really nice. See how the flamethrower didn't even try to talk to me. That was that was really perfect. Um, and then here there's a setup, which is you target, turn left get a side roll left angle, crouch step left, then back walk, then turn around target, jump slash, and you're through. And then you can go out there, hit the corner, doesn't matter the angle, walk a tiny bit before back flipping, because otherwise it doesn't work. And then you can go there and, uh, how do you do that? Does that not work? Yeah, it does. Ah, oh, but that's super hard. So yeah, this is just so smooth. I I love this setup. It's uh, that's back flipping too early. Um, but yeah, okay. Just wanted to show that once, and now we can go ahead and uh, keep doing stuff. Back turn is good cycle plus setup, and now we're going to go to two eighteen ten, which is the start of um, the start of this thing. What I like to do is climb here, flick up right, and side hop left. The reason for that is that whatever camera angle you have when you press this button is going to be given back to you when the thing starts okay so for example he had this weird I ass I don't think I'll be able camera to angle and it's just been given back to him a few frames before he flicked so you see how like the camera is looking over there what i do is i climb here flick upright which means i'm gonna be f having the camera facing this and therefore during the cutscene i can be already holding up Whereas, uh, I don't think I'll be able to do any what the hell has to re angle, wait, double check his angle, and then go, this is another insane scene. which which That's loses a bit of time. Three days or four days. I think you can roll here just... and here, like you, you can roll in most stuff, but uh, in tournament it might be a little different. Okay, cool. Uh, now 219.30 is going to be the jump set up to Volvagia. Um, you do backflip, down roll, and then do this. Um, this is fine. I would recommend don't do the backflip, just ESS down and get the down roll with ESS down. Uh, also, all of this is really slow. Like, if you target this and you're in the corner, flick right, and then get an up plus A roll. Up plus A on same frame, you'll just make it. So uh, this will work with an up plus A. Uh, yeah, nice. And with the Goron Tunic, yeah, something to mention. Since you have the Goron Tunic, I would honestly have gone over there and used the Melrose Godlike setup. Melrose has a godlike setup. Um... Let me show. Yeah, Melrose has the sickest setup ever. <sighs> I just have to talk to that guy. Yo, what's up, Skyward? On fait la revue de, des techs de what the hell. 
we're doing the tech review. Uh, it's taking forever. It's probably going to be a four hour video, but um, I'm happy to do it. It's probably going to come in handy. Can you stop talking, Darunia? Please, please, please stop talking. How long does that guy talk? Come on. Can he stop talking? Thanks. God, that was long. So, uh, Melrose, Godlike Setup. Uh, don't have sword. Have anything that you will be able to dry roll. Get in the corner, climb, target. You dry roll. And during the dry roll, release target, hold down. This is so good. This this is so good, honestly. Like this is such a good setup. And then um as we were saying before, like if you want to go here from there, might as well go straight line. If you have Goron Tunic, you have nothing to lose. So uh draw a straight line. Okay. Cool. Nice, nice. All right. Uh, now, what's the next thing? I don't think I checked the Volvagia fight. If you, if you have not, I don't think you're crouch stabbing choose. Many people are not crouch stabbing choose. Uh, choose are really fast. You're saving one pop out cycle on Volvagia. Um, I have a video. Volvagia. Yeah, this video. Um, it. It tells you which pattern to do for which pops. So depending like uh, if Volvagia pops out from. Uh... Oh, you don't see it. Yeah. OK, watch it here. Um, you know, it tells you like if it's here, here, you you do three choose, then stun, then five choose. Uh, if it's on those one, you do five choose, you back up to avoid fire and then four choose. And you have a few situations like that, like the easiest being uh, at the very bottom, you're just throwing nine chews uh, and it's pretty easy. Um, what you can, and this is for troll hole one, three, three. So it's basically the same as bombs. Uh, but as you can see, like you usually um, have only one pop out. It's like you place three chews, it pops out once, then you're going to place more choose, but on the next pop out, you're going for the kill instead of going for the stun, putting more bombs and then going for the kill. So uh, it, it saves quite a bit of time and uh, it's not as hard as it looks. So uh, yeah, you, you may want to check this. And if you don't know how to stab the choose, um, Oh yeah, there's a tech for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For troll hole, you can stun to the side so that the head is far. It's uh it's really handy, but it's it's really difficult to do it that fast. But anyway, so it's possible to do it fast with any cycle and everything goes really good. Salut Amala, ça va ou quoi? On est en train de faire la la revue des tech de what the hell. C'est uh, c'est plutôt intéressant. Malheureusement, c'est une vidéo qui dure très longtemps. Mais, uh, okay, let's get back to our sheeps, uh, which is a French expression, probably doesn't mean anything. Uh, jump set up to evolve, and then we're going to jump in time and go to 2 hour and 27 minutes, uh, which is going to be Wasteland. Uh, what the hell does not use any sort of a setup for Wasteland? Um, they're very nice setups. Uh, I have a few of them on my channel. Uh, you can probably find other people that have cool setups for the wasteland. The thing is, at this opportunity, 
uh, what the hell had the long shot. So for the long shot, you probably don't want, I, I would still use the Kukiri Boots crossing uh, quicksand just to get back on track uh, for a back walk setup later on. But let's say you have the long shot, you want to long shot the box. And uh, so you fucked up your angle. You don't really want to take time to reset up. How can you get semi fast on the first half? So the way it's gonna work is like uh, Wasteland starts with like four poles. So this is the last pole that are like they're all aligned. It's it starts as a big line and then it goes like a little like this. So you're gonna count Wait, one, walk back down. I wanted to play two. And three and basically you see there's there's one pole here and there's one here it's super hard to see but right now your angle is perfect like between two and three you you just use that angle to get a back walk and you see it on the mini map right there like he has a slight angle going up and this is a highway it's so wide it's like I don't know how many peoples you could fit in there, but it's really wide. Believe me, it's wide. So, uh, yeah, between those two poles, uh, you just get the angle, boom, and do a back walk, and um, you will be uh, at the middle. Okay, uh, now another big jump in time because he was playing godlike at 245.38. Season four. Oh, by the way, there was a. I believe X. Jump. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here, um, what the hell is going to be at the v going to the wall, which is completely useless. <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. But um, you can just go here in the middle. If you're on the on the very edge at the middle, it's basically the same. All of this works, and uh, this is basically where it starts to work. Um... <laughs> Yo, what's up, Yon? I think the nana of text to speech ne works pas ce soir. Um, there's a little dot on the floor that is what I use. I just go a little bit after and what I do to stop before the, how do you call this? The void, the emptiness, the whatever, uh, is I use the crouching animation of the shield to kill all, everything. Yeah, to stop before the pit. <laughs> I always feel like pit is someone, just see it, I'm sorry. like Peter. Too bad. Too bad. So yeah, so you actually don't need to go that much over there. And then here, you don't need to go to that corner. Going to the left side of the door also works. So by just optimizing the, the, the areas that you know are going to trigger the Anubis to burn, uh, you'll save a little bit on your movement. And uh, the this first thing of people going to the very end um, is something I see a lot. I see it a lot, and uh, it's not that bad, but it's not that good either. Uh, then is the knuckle fight, but there was also something here. Uh, here, if you go over there, uh, if you go over there and like a little bit before the line, you throw a bomb at him, the bomb will collide and explode directly. So, uh, so you can, uh, so you can trigger him and then make your move to that door so that, um, you don't have to get there and then use the hook shot and stuff like that. What is no logic November? Hey, what's up, big salt? Now nah, I'm not joining the race tonight. I'm sorry. Uh, even though it's hype, the gun unless race is hype. Um, I'm not joining my, my N64 setup is not even ready. So, uh, sorry, man. But uh, yeah, thank you for promoting your race in my chat. Um, all right, cool. Uh, let's keep going. About a bit. Is that every so yeah, so logic? here you've been hookshotting this from being there and that lost oh. a tiny bit of time. 
I wish you good luck with the with the race, Big Salt. I'm recording a I'm recording a video right now, and uh, it's still probably gonna take me a a little bit. You still love me, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so that was the inhibitus move, the armos bomb, and now okay. let's go ahead to the knuckle fight. Um, in randomizer, we have a shit lot of health at this point, um, and um, when you're here, you can side hop five times to the right, and then quick draw jump slash, Makes sense. which will basically have you around there and jump slash over there. What's good with that angle is that if you position correctly, uh, your crouch stab will not hit the, the throne. It will just go ahead and hit the legs, you will trigger it, and while it will go up and turn towards you, you will be already placed on the right as the position that you want to get when you are fighting Naboru. So I, I think this is a tiny well, bit faster than going behind the throne. Sucks. Don't worry, Big Sal, you're fine. It's not like a super pro right. video. I'm just doing a, a review. I got I got big notes here and just all of the timestamps that I want to say something at. So yeah. <sighs> okay, so that was the knuckle fight. I don't then you get some stuff. Sick. And then here um is a mi mistake. Is something that I see a lot. It's like, so, okay, let's put things in context. You have the long shot. That's in case you have the long shot. You're doing one roll and then going all the way <laughs> to fucking China. I don't know why you're going that far. But basically, right there at the corner would work. Um, what I like to do is in the room before... Um, I don't know why you went all the way to the left, but just open in the middle, roll up left, and after one roll and one roll only, you pull the hook. Because, like, here is plenty enough. They won't attack you. You you have plenty of time. If you stand around there, you can, you can shoot the long shot. So th there's no need to lose all of those frames to go up until the wall and then shoot there. Unless Fountain is Boomerang, then we'll... Okay. Um, all right. Now, next thing, 40, 45 is jump. What is this? 240. Wait, that's a big... Not like I can set Ferraris and Jabu, but I can. Oh yeah, them. I remember that. So right here, you're going to be uh, targeting this and climbing that. You see how like this is crooked? You can jump here. Jump right there. If that's like it, it works from the other side too. But like, it's really easy. It doesn't fail much. So uh, if you're in that position. Uh, just YOLO uh, hold right into a jump, it will work. It will 95% time work. And uh, it's going to be much more fast than climbing that and then walking slowly all the way there. Um, okay, 4505 is the next one. So we're going to be in Jabu Jabs, the Jabby Jab. Walking. Okay, so at this point, you're trying to farm for skulls, and uh, you're arriving there with no um, 30 thick thousands of sticks, uh, and the skull is on the right. Yeah, no uh, you can actually, like, go to the right, throw Rudo, salut jean -Mobert. and then jump and jump slash with the stick, which will kill the skull faster than two boomerang hits. Then grab Rudo, throw her, uh, push the button, or directly boomerang the stuff. Um, it's 
probably faster. I I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it feels like it would be faster. Okay. Um but that's really in the context, like you have many sticks, you're farming for skulls, and uh, I think I saw Pappy Grant using that jump slash the first time I saw it, and I was like, dude, that's smart. Because there is that little extension of uh, Jebu Jebu skin, or whatsoever it is, uh, that you can, you can walk on for a really long time, and then it always jump. It's not one of those shitty stuff that sometimes doesn't get you a jump like the Deku Tree branches. So uh, pretty reliable. You will all get always get that. Uh, Forty six oh five is the classic backwalk. Uh, you're not doing it. I think you should be doing it. So this backwalk in the main room, like right there, you have the perfect angle. Like it's funny because it looks like you're setting yourself up to get it, and uh, you just have to backwalk. Ah ouais, c'est pas mal. Yeah, Amal is mentioning that uh, for the skull, you can you can collect it by using the boomerang and backflipping before the boomerang comes back. There's even something more crazy. Uh, was it Melrose or Sponge or Zef finding it? I don't remember. It might be Zephyr. It was Zephyr? Yeah. Um, so... You hit the skull with the rang once, it dies on the second time, then you shoot the rang and backflip, and the idea is you want to press the switch right after it hits, or at the same time that it hits, so that during the cutscene the boomerang is frozen at the spot that the skull is, this is the boomerang, and this is the skull. So the boomerang is hitting and then pressing the button freezes everyone. The skull transforms into a token. This is this is a token. And um and then when things go back to normal, the boomerang grabs the token and brings it back to you, saving you one throw. Uh which is huge. I haven't tried it. It looks dope. It looks amazing. So uh, I think it's worth going for, and worst case scenario, I don't, I don't think it's a big deal if you if you backflip too early, and I don't think you can backflip too late. Yeah, you can backflip too late. Yeah, but I think it's no big deal if you miss it. Like you're not, you're not losing that much time. You're just not saving it. But uh, yeah, that's an option. Thank you, Amala, for reminding me. Uh, uh, boomerang stuff. Uh, so yeah, 4605, you're not doing the backwalk. Um, usually, the tag for the backwalk is that you want to open that door on the right so that just you forcing to the right will slightly change the camera and it's kind of consistent. So, um, uh, so it's really good. If you're kind of out here in the open, uh, any joystick moves will move the cam and make you move in a way that you will have to aim for longer and will just reduce the, um, the generosity of the time save that this back walk will bring you. But uh, no big deal. And then uh, 4849... Um, this might be something that I want to tackle. So when do I come back to that? And maybe I want to play this. I don't really feel like I want to play right now. And I don't want to play Jabu. But here, when you enter this room, the first time you're going to target in this room, you will target a... A Beery? It's called a Beery? I think it's called a Beery. One of those jellyfishes. Let's call them Beery for tonight. Uh, maybe for tomorrow too. The first time you target, well, we're talking whole targeting, you know, like the decent way to play this game. Uh, you're going to target a Beery. If you target twice and hold on the second one, you will be targeting the Cucumber or whatsoever you want to call this. Mm 
Yeah, call it whatever. Uh, what you're doing is running around this room. I'm not too fond of that tech. Uh, to give you an idea of what I do is... I double target to go for the cucumber, get closer, throw the boomerang, get one hit, then I get inside the square of berries, then go to the left. Like I'm always targeting the cucumber. So Link is always gonna be looking at the middle. So go center and then get back out to the left side, which is over there. Throw the boomerang again, get back in, get back out over there. Throw the boomerang again. At this point, the beers are going to be too close for me to get back in. So what I do is I get uh, behind that one to get over there for the last shot on which I keep walking to the left. And at this point, the beers are going to be so well regrouped that any stick swing or uh, sword swing is going to hit two of them. Uh, but first you, uh, you put them down by a deco knot and you have them all on the floor. Um, I have never thought of quick spinning with the sword, but it's just so unusual to have the sword. Um, but anyway, uh, you get the point. They're all on the floor, super close to each other. A chew could do uh, genocide on them really quick. Magic quick spin works, sweet. I'm pretty sure without magic they don't. But yeah, uh, so that's really nice. And I think attacking the cucumber and knowing that little uh, go in, get out, go in, get out, get outside to the side. So you're basically doing a circle like that, but you go in, then go out, then go back in, go back out, and every time you shoot when you're out, you start here, you shoot, get in, get out, shoot, get in, get out over there, shoot, then circle around, shoot. You're basically waiting for the cucumber to uh, be, uh, be available again. And you circle around that other one uh, to shoot the last one. And during the boomerang shoot, you can, you can just gauge like, how the berries are regrouped or not not them and you're good to go for the rest so uh that's what i do i have no idea how much faster it is i would say it's faster because uh let's watch it all together but uh running around here this is very consistent by the way this is a very good option for like having a consistent time at doing this but I have the feeling that um, regrouping the berries uh, is optimal. I could be wrong. And then you didn't go for the backlog because you dropped Rudo, which is your strat choice. I have no idea if it's a good choice or not. Uh, otherwise, there are cues before opening the door, uh, which is basically this is the left or part where you want to put Link's ear. Um, so you want to put Link's hat like somewhere around here on the side. And once you open the door, target, turn around, uh, back walk, and you will get what you just aimed for right here by, um, aiming at somewhere to hit the door. Okay. Uh, double target for the cucumber. And then... 250 45 oh yeah this room this room i have no idea what's the fast option i really have no idea uh, i see a lot of people going here and um uh, and shooting that platform first i personally like to trigger the left platform by standing around this corner and shooting this one first so that I have this as a shield for the popcorn spitter. And then I can shoot this one and then jump, jump, and then I'm done with jumping. Yo, what's up, man? Glitchless does the right platform first. Okay, so it might be faster. But uh, yeah, one more option. So consider what I just said as slower. But uh, But it's an option because right here... You see how like you just avoided that popcorn. Now you just took a hit 
And uh, oh, you should jump slash that. It's uh, it's fairly easy. Wait, I forgot the skulls. Yeah, you forgot the skulls, but that's okay. We're just checking your text. Um. Okay, you you buffer this, which I think is a good idea. And then here you're doing a setup. I know you always do this setup if you have choose. Probably really like it. I think I messed up the position. And uh, and you do that chew. Uh, by the way, you messed up. Um. Should I go and? Ch I'm pretty sure. Like I'm ninety nine percent sure. You know how to do. Uh, with the boomerang, but just in case, because I see you do that a little too often, uh, I'm going to go and show you. That's the warp from boss. That's super weird. I just landed in a weird-ass room. Um... <laughs> Wait. Explorer. Is that it? Oh no. Okay, that's it. Okay, so you lose time to equip, choose, then equip again, nuts, no. Yeah, you probably do, but even the BK skip is super slow. Like, I really don't like the way he did it. There's easier setups. I'm going to kill those homies. Because why not? So you see there's a, you see the 151 of the rupees? There's a gray spot right there. See, I'm walking on it right now. I'm walking on sunshine. So this gray spot is why people happy. Um, so that's what you're aiming for when you enter the room. You're aiming for that that gray spot. It's really not precise. Then you pull out the ring and uh, you hold because you know how to play the game. And then I put the top of Link's hat. You see the, the pointy stuff of Link hat. I put it at the end of the vines. You see like those are the vines. And when they end on the left, I put Link's hat. This is also not precise at all. Then I go full up by holding down. Sorry, I said I go full up, but uh, yeah. And then release and do two side hops left. Uh, the timing of your two side hops left matters. So you have to do them quick. As soon as you release, side up left. And during the cutscene, you hold down left. This is my homie Amala telling me this. Which means you're going to be grabbing right when you get back control of Link. You're going to be grabbing that little edge and uh, and you go out there. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a little crash course. So remember, let's do it again. Gray spot. side of the vines all the way up be quick on the side hops once you release the hook and then there you go also if you want to kill that skull you can just uh you can just jump slash through the wall and it works Okay, cool. Uh, Baronite fight with hold targeting is the next thing we're going to do. Yo, thank you, Pan. See you next time. As soon as you pass your visual cue, it's so lenient. You can do the alignment pretty fast. Mm. 
works only with sticks and not with sword? Does it not work with sword? I don't know. I haven't tested. I think my save state is super far, so I'm not going to check. Anyway, we're almost we're almost there. It's almost midnight. Um it's been 3 hours I started and uh I want to get this video less than 4 hours, so uh so let's keep going. Uh one quick tip for Baronade if you use hold targeting. If you use hold targeting, you might have experienced uh this thing being uh, really difficult to start targeting the next one. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, this is not sub three already. So what you want to do is untarget, retarget quickly as the boomerang is getting in your hands. Oh shit. Fuck, sorry <laughs> for the claps, I clicked wrong. But yeah, the three R mark. Sorry, sorry. So when you shoot that, you see how like he's walking away. You probably don't need to do that. You don't need to move that much between uh, between the hits. But now, right about now, when the boomerang is about to hit Link's hands, you can untarget, retarget, and that will switch. If you do it before that, you will switch back to the same you will you will not target a new one so that sucks a little bit but uh you can you can just untarget retarget another time and it's fine it will switch but yeah that's just one small tip i wanted to slide in uh and then we're going to go to something that is infuriating Oh my god, what am I witnessing? Ugh. Okay, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, yo, what's up, Slow? So, there is a... <laughs> so, there is a there is an obscure mechanic that goes with Jabu's Warp, which is the the reason why we're having fun with that. I'm, I'm not really saying it's disgusting, but... Well, once you know the trick, you will laugh with me. So... Um, Aruto is going, wants to force Link to be at a precise position first, instruction one, get in that position. And second thing is she wants him to look at him before she starts talking. And this is what makes the cutscene start. So the problem is, um... Depending where Link is, so let's imagine this is the position Link needs to go. If Link is here, he will be teleported there and he will always face the direction that the teleport is making him do. And then if Ruto, let's say Ruto is on top, Link will have to slowly get angled all the way until he faces Ruto. So let's see how it goes. Boom. And then uh, it takes three hours and a half before facing Rudo. <laughs> That's a real woman. So what you want to be doing is you try to aim for, uh, you try to face Rudo and you, you tiptoe into the warp so that you get teleported in a way that is going to be facing Rudo. And you're going to have the cutscene start as fast as possible. You never want to like dash roll into the warp because this is going to have Link turn around and get all the spinning spin all the way in. Uh, and that's basically it. And you want to not arrive too much sideways, but like try to face Ruto a little bit. Uh, you can target her if you want. And then tiptoe into the warp uh, just to get that little dash in that will just face her. You can, like, honestly, let's watch it. You could, boom, have the cutscene start right now. And he is losing one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's it's almost 
five seconds. It's almost like this is so significant. It's it's really a lot. Fourteen hearts. Like, if from here you tiptoe, it like as soon as the dash goes in, you would be teleported into the cutscene. Like, boom, cutscene. Three, four. But yeah, that's four and a half seconds. So that's that's actually like a huge chunk of time, but it's kind of an obscure mechanic that is not too uh, mentioned anywhere. So um, so no big deal. But uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, what the hell probably knows that he's just too lazy to care. That's uh, that's that's the way I see it. Um. Okay, so OMG enter warp is done. Now 257.05. We're arriving to the to pretty much the end of the um, of the thing. Nice cleaver. Oh wait. Oh yeah. Um he is getting this jump slash that does not get the double hit. Uh Master Sword Jump Slash. Uh, doesn't get the double hit. Uh, tu peux montrer ce que ça donne quand c'est réussi. Uh, faudrait que je tue Barinade. Je vais essayer de speeder un petit peu, Charles en soi. Uh, est-ce que je vous montre ce que ça donne quand c'est réussi? Ouais, c'est c'est vraiment juste. En fait, tu tu dash in et paf, et t'es tu t'es devant elle et tu et tu tu lances direct la cutscene. So Charles en soi was asking if I can show how it looks when. Uh, when you do properly the thing about Rudo's warp, but uh, uh, I don't want to have to kill Baron A. That's kind of, it's kind of annoying. Um, okay. So um, I think for this jump slash, I would think that he was too close. Like you see him being completely inside. I like to think that you really need to hit with the tip of the sword to get the double, uh, the double thing. Um, it was clearly a complicated situation. He angled the things really well. So um, this is going to be for other people than what the hell. This is the Q. The Q is left elbow. Left elbow does small swings and then goes a huge one. And then when it goes back in, you you anticipate the elbow touching by jump slashing. That's that's the window um that's that what you look at so let's uh let's check it all together big elbow swing and go you saw it that's that's the big elbow swing right there okay it's having small swings small swings and their big elbow swing coming back and this was the a press Next frame, he's jump slashing, and he gets it. He was probably uh, too close. I really like being super far. If you have BGS, get super far. Um, basically, um, if you're in a position that you can have like your crouch stab slash, and then uh, let um, let that hand go. Basically, don't move. Is mostly the positioning uh it might feel awkward so do it in practice just to see but um you can be you can probably be a lot further than one would think i don't want to say you because maybe you do it perfect um okay then next thing uh corridor choice and equips at 259.25 259.25, so that's a room that Dylan timed. Uh, you didn't do any equip changes do do at I this point. And uh, right after this corridor, you're going to be switching Dins for, um, for a bow in order to do the room with the like-like and the keys, uh, which I think it's cool. Um, what I would suggest is you put nuts instead of bombs so that you have nuts hook bow i do nut bow hook but it's the same uh just use a controller that doesn't have a, a shitty index button on the c down so you know just a controller made for the game 
Funny and chill. yeah, you can do uh, after three rolls, there's like a nut upright that can stun all three at the same time. Uh, what I like is after I do kind of a pussy variant of this, uh, which is roll three times and then nut forward, nut upright and a little more right than upright and it kind of makes sure that everyone is stunned and then you can just bomb through all of that um yeah i wanted to talk about the equips because go. then you I equip something back. here and at first i thought like okay the hook shot thing is because he wants to save an equip but then you're not sure. so yeah and then here you're jumping with kokiri boots but I'm wrong, uh, I'm wrong. Wait, I have hover boots. <laughs> but you're saying the uh, after, um, wait, I have hover boots. So uh, I know it's not a mistake. You just forgot, you know, like some stuff. There's many parts of the run that I didn't note anything, even though you did something wrong, because I was like, you already know that. And like, you know that this is uh, like, sometimes you fuck up trying the good thing. I'm not going to show that it's completely useless. Okay, um, now next thing is double rupee with long shot. Oh, yeah, I know what it is. Uh, 302 is something something. Yeah. Okay, so it's right after this. Here, um, you see there are red patches like here, here, and here. This one is a little bit lighter than the other ones. This is where you want to stand to get uh, both of the rupees at the same time with the long shot. Uh, so from here, uh, you aim to the target and you will grab the one that's in the air. Um, this is the spot that you go if you're using the normal hook, even though like this is fine. And you should use a jump slash here. <laughs> Come on. I didn't kill him? Why not? You didn't kill the other one? Okay, that's that's for example, I don't have this on my sheet because I was like, yeah, you just forgot. Who cares? Um here you have an equip on which I would suggest that you put shoes instead of bombs. Uh shoes are gonna be faster for the next things that you need to do. And then um I replace the bow with nuts. And uh, you will see why I will go and play uh, to show this. Um, I will show the fan room. The fan room has been for the past five months uh, a strat that was. Same uh, all. Dude, I don't trust those mods, dude. That was sub only. <laughs> no. We're just laughing at it, but I mean, everyone knows the secret. Um, but yeah, we, we had that joke uh, about the fan room. But yeah, you know, there is a there is a strat that uh on the fourth flash of the chew you um you shield the chew uh, targeting on one of the sides. Uh so I think it's a tiny bit faster than climbing those two stuff because you can pull chew as soon as you enter the room. Uh the Rebecca room. And then uh, choose will be faster after the fan room to so that you can crouch stab a chew to uh, blow up the and access the invisible chest later on. Uh, but yeah, let's go straight to the point and we're going to go to the fan room. So first mistake, you're opening the fan room uh, by facing it. So you're losing, uh, you're losing all of the easiness of uh of the fan room by opening it facing it i mean you could you could do that and just be like yeah dude i'm so good i'm gonna do it without this which is cool um i don't but uh you do you uh okay so i need to place the capture on my gameplay and um i'm losing my voice explorer let me explore. Oh, that's here. Okay, cool. And boom. And then this.
this. Okay, so I do it with nuts. Uh, with with these nuts, and uh, so you, I like to turn around. So then, uh, when I land from the hook, I just turn around back walk and then open the door. So it loads all of the stuff after. <laughs> it loads the room a little bit later, um, which gives you more leniency to do the stuff. And um, and then you hold up left, three side ups, flick just because you want to time, and then two side ups to the right, nut, four side ups to the right, back walk, and put the hover boots. Okay? So after this, you hold up left, three side ups, Flick the shield, which is just a way to wait, because otherwise you're going to be hitting one of the spiky thingy thingy. So open there, hold up left. Shield. One, two, nut. One, two, three, four, back walk. Put the hover boots with the foot pedal. Take away the hover boots. Keep back walking. And then open the room. Okay? So, um, this is really lenient uh, with the nut. I find it a lot more complicated. <laughs> I find it a lot more complicated to do it uh, with the shoes, so I'm losing an equip by um, putting the nuts. Uh, so yeah, it might not be optimal, but dude, it's so consistent. And you could fuck up a lot. Like, you have probably a 2-3 seconds leniency uh, to mess up. Okay? Uh, let's go back to it and try to show um, something that messed up. One, two, three, time. And then let's say I go too far back. Uh, and this, this would still work. I didn't manage to mess up. I waited half a year. And it still worked. So let's let's be honest, this is this is this is white people happy. Uh what are you saying? You had to do Shadow Stone Baron Wally. On my race today I got hit by a spike and still got it to work. Yeah, you see, like it's really cool. It's a cool strat. It's a good option. Uh, I recommend it. Uh, it's not the fastest. So if you want to be the faster, the fastest person on earth, you don't want to do that. But uh, you want to backflip a chew probably. And if you backflip a chew, it's not. So it's like up left, three side up, flick shield, back walk. And then it's three, backflip chew, three, and then back walk hover boots. It's not super different. It's three two three instead of two not four uh okay uh the next room you had a really weird really weird strat here i don't get it um what i like to do is uh quick draw and flick left um the camera is either right or left but we're going to compensate it by doing side up and then side up instant jump slash like this which is going to compensate the fact that the camera being right or left uh won't always hit you see how it didn't hit so uh that's what we're compensating for
So, uh, and then after you usually have a position, uh, it's, it's not going to work here, but you really, ha you usually have a position that, uh, rolling down gets you to the chest. It wasn't too far, but, uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is the way I do this room. And, uh, I, I really like it. Yeah, you see, that was just holding down. So, like, it really flows together pretty nice. Um, and just the thing to remember is don't target when you enter the room. If you target when you enter the room, you target that stuff, uh, which is bad for your health. But you can still get it back. It's uh, it's fine. Okay, cool. Uh, let's get on with things. Uh, corridor choice and equips double room fan room read it set up next oh, okay yeah yeah, yeah. Th there was there was weird things on the next read edits too um okay so next room i'm just going to show you what i do uh it's not optimal let's be honest but uh this is what i do I like to have a chew here so that I can crouch stab a chew here. I don't know why, but it's pretty lenient. I think it's because the chew goes on the chest. And so it goes on the chest and down and all the way when it goes up to the chest, uh, it's, it's vulnerable to the crouch stab. So, uh, so this crouch stab feels like a lot more easy than crouch stabs usually feel. So yeah, and this is pretty fast. Once you open this, um, you have many different options here. The thing is, you always want to um, you always want to hook shot that. If you backflip true, you can hook the chest through the explosion. What? Oh, I can't do it. Sorry. But okay, sounds cool. Um, I mean, when you're doing shadow, it's usually a time of the of the seed that you don't really care too much uh, about um, damage. So you can crouch that or uh, have an explosion and just run into it. It's, it's no big deal. So you want to hook those guys because if you don't hook them, they will scream at you for sure as soon as you touch your sword. They will scream. That is guaranteed. So you'll lose a lot of time to that. And uh, even if you try to be far, like they will scream and uh, and they'll have you lose time. I've heard about stuff that the second one doesn't scream, but if you want to be consistent, you want to be um, hookshotting them. As soon as you get there, there is a pot that is going to come at you. So the pot is currently over there and it's going to lift up and fly to me. Okay. Uh, you can crouch under it, which is what I do to avoid it. And then I space for a jump slash. Uh, I think Marco does something a bit faster that felt optimal. I think he does something like goes to the pot and then does a jump slash. So if you're looking for something optimal, that's probably what you want to be doing. But I'm just too scared for that. So I'll give you my, my shy strat, which is go there, quick draw and crouch, side hop jump slash. So go there, quick draw, crouch, wait for the pot to go over, target, side hop, jump slash. And this is just a no brainer. Like it will always work. The side hop will always space you. It will always face the jump slash will always hit both hits. Um, and it's really nice. Uh, something really funny about this room that is worth noting is that if you had a uh, Bicor on sword uh, equipped, 
let me have a safe state here. If you have Bigoran Sword equipped, um, the trigger for the chest cutscene to appear is not going to be the death of the um, the Gibdo or whatsoever or the Redead, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's one or the other. It's going to be like the the trigger is both of these objects being dead. So if the Gibdo dies before the pod dies, you have a little bit of time to move. So what you can do with Bigoron Sword is actually you have time to input a backflip because the pot is not yet broken. Yeah, look. Now, impossible for me to move. Now, if I do it quick, I can move because the pot is not yet broken. <laughs> it's crazy, right? <laughs> I don't know why it's coded like that. It's super weird. So that's something you can only do with the Bigoron sword and it gets you a lot closer to uh to the chest. Uh which is which is cool. This is, it's cool you want to be closer. It's uh The pot probably counts as like an, a moving actor that is not done with his purpose or whatsoever. This is a kill all enemies chest? Yeah, maybe. Why only with BGS? Oh, because that's it's the only one that you can you can kill the stuff fast enough. So yeah, so this is this is a potential movement for this room. Uh if you have BGS damage stored. Um I have heard that uh it is possible to go for jump slash here. Uh, but honestly, I'm, I would be too scared that consistency gets fucked. Dude, am I like right in front of the chest? <laughs> I'm even too far back. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Oh no, no, the trigger is not different when BGS is equipped. It's just that you can be fast enough so that you beat the pot. Uh, you could probably beat the pot with uh with normal sword by doing a jump slash, but uh let's try. <laughs> yeah, but you would need to get that lucky jump slash, and uh, I wouldn't count on it. Now, next thing is, uh, what the hell does the jump? And the way he does the jump is like he goes there, uh, does the shield, and then jumps, which is probably even uh, with uh, with hook shotting. Because in order to have one second of advance, you would need to do something like this, which is insane. But yeah, what the hell? When you watch that video, just know that like if you want to do the jump, this is the kind of jump that you want to do. No angling, just like just that crazy hold upright into get there and YOLO it completely. This is the only way that you're going to save time. Otherwise, uh, this ladder is crazy. Like, I think I can hook this. You see, <laughs> it still grabs on top. So, uh, it's really cool. Like, you don't need at all to hook the top of the ladder. You only need to hook on the left. And, uh, and it's pretty lenient. It will grab the top and then, I don't know. Yeah, two side up is pretty good. So um, this is a super, super strong option. Slower, a lot slower. No, not a lot slower. One second slower, I think. I timed them. It's on my YouTube. Um, 
So it's a little bit slower, but it's a really strong option in terms of consistency. Now I know uh, what the hell doesn't like aiming, so uh, I can understand you want to go for the jump, but um, if you go for the jump, I would say go all in. If you want to go for the jump, go take the time save of it and go all in. Like get used to that upright rolly roll, and uh, and you'll get that. Okay, uh, three oh nine. Let's go back to what the hell gameplay. Uh, yeah, we're not too far from being done. I have like five more ticks to go. Uh, the last one being just before Ganon. So now we're going to have what the hell fight Bongo Bongo, which is uh, it's a big moment. Light arrows and stone shadow. Oh, that's getting this. That's weird. He is uh, using a charge spin to stun and then being the quick spin master. Uh, this is all right. This is cool. I know this kind yeah, of like what the I hell signature. Um, it's it's very typical. Um, there's something that helps me to get the one cycle with master sword or whatsoever. Uh, is bongo bongo before you damn it's the other way before you you fight him is doing like pam pum 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 pam pum 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 pam pum 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 pam pum 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 so i just listen to that and it puts me into this rhythm of boom pum 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 pam pum and that's that's the rhythm i press b so that's the crouch stab rhythm it it seems to work for me I don't know if that's really the rhythm or not. I have no idea how I could check that. But during I this cutscene, no, that, that's not the settings. That's just <laughs> it's just today for getting this crazy thing. Oh yeah, you know once the qual start, that's where he gives you the rhythm, which is which is a really good way. Like to me, it's a really good cue to like get in the habit of. Uh, you know, you don't need to remember perfectly what's the timing. You don't need to have visual cues. You have Bongo Bongo putting the rhythm into you just before you go into the fight. So, uh, so yeah, that would be uh, that would be what I would go for. Now, after this, we go back to GTG, and what the hell is gonna be doing the toilet check because the mirror shield is in there? Spoiler alert. And uh, there's a tiny bit of a strat to start, which uh, so he's starting good right now. I would be I would be swimming backward at this moment. So swim backward, just fully backwards. I don't know why this mini turn. And then as soon as you hit this one, oh my god, what am I doing? Oh no. As please game <laughs> okay okay let's get back to it swim backward don't do that little shitty shing and then as soon as you hit the previous rupee you start going to the right into upright to hit that one then go to the middle one which is basically what you wanted to do but it turned out to not work too good And then uh, that strat that you did, that's basically what I would recommend doing over there. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. And then when you when you grab this one, when you grab this one, you can remember that f you face there, have link face there and target so that he was facing over there. So you know you want to be going up here. No, on the right. <laughs> my eyes are closed he doesn't want to know if he's got the mirror shield he's just gonna play requiem um anyway so yeah so that was a a few stuff now 318 40 
31840. I don't know if anyone has the, the link to the video, but um, there's a really cool setup here, which is side hop left, flick right, two side hops left, crouch stab, and it shines the light on the sun with the shield. Um, basically, when you crouch stab, the shield goes to the side like this. And this shines the light on the on the sun. So this is a little setup for this part. If you open the door completely on the left and you have Master Sword, really important. Doesn't work with BGS. Uh, yeah, exactly, Amala. It works only with the Master Sword. Sadly, um, not much with other stuff. But, you know, it's, uh, it's still something. I, I really enjoy this setup. Uh, it's a little slower than what could be done optimally, but like that was probably faster than the setup. So uh, yeah, keep rocking. What the hell? You're so fast. Uh, hook on Rova's second face. I don't know why you don't hook on Rova's second face. It's very weird. So usually you would go far away so that the bullet has a lot of travel time you would double click the hook like pull out the hook and then double click it before it hits the shield which is the risky way so that it resets the state of rova and she moves away faster saving about two seconds each time you do it which is a total of four seconds um, now, if you think this is too risky, you store the hit and right now you pull the hook and you do the the double hook thingy. Because it will still make it faster. You can also press hook, then A and shield. Oh, you mean hold hook, then A and shield? That's a good idea. I double click the hook and then press shield. But okay. So release hook, then A and shield. Okay, thank you, Sky. Sounds cool. So yeah, I don't know why you don't do that. Uh, but that's four seconds. Considering how fast you go on so many other things, like this is weird. And then you mash this. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. Mashing this is fine. Like, the window's pretty wide. You're not going to fail if you store the last hit from this platform. So mashing is okay. Um, but in case, you have two different cues. You could look at her jigglies, and when they stop jiggling, uh, you stab. Um, but this is for the loot people that run MST, which I'm not part of. And what I do is I watch the hand. When the hand gets back to the ground, right now, I press one more time. The hand gets back to the ground, boom, boom. And that gets it every time. You fail if you don't mash, damn. Should you also mash rolls? You should mash rolls if you're wearing the hover boots. Otherwise, uh, it's situational, let's say. Okay, we're getting to the end. Um, okay, that was actually uh, just before the last thing. Now, this is the last thing I want to be talking about. So here... You know you have to store a jump slash. You tried to quick draw jump slash to make it look cooler because you're that kind of guy. Uh, doing the door quick draws and all of that. Press three frames after. So uh, be it. <laughs> no worries. What I don't like is that right now you took the entire time loss of being static after a jump slash. Um, you see this this pointy texture right here uh if you stand right there what i do is i quick draw a sword right there and jump slash over that stuff 
which means in the middle of my jump slash, the cutscene is already starting. So all of the rest of my jump slash, which is a completely static motion of Link not moving forward, this is inside of the cutscene, so I'm not losing time to that anymore. Like this is the same reason why you jump slash with the with the hammer entering Volvage's cutscene is so that the jump slash uh, static time is eaten by the cutscene, so it's not a uh, it's not in the rest. And that is actually the very last thing I had to say. This has been a very long video. I'm super sorry um, if you guys feel sleepy. This was a lot of information to take in. Um, I hope you liked it. I really did my best to, uh, to make good content. What the hell? I hope this makes you the fastest player on earth. Uh, I hope many other people could... Uh, uh, could learn from that. Um, I'm really happy that uh, people are accepting my invitations to do those kinds of review. Uh, it makes me, it makes me happy. It gives me the opportunity to uh, uh, share that little knowledge. Uh, I'm not a super good player, but I'm a nerdy player, so uh, uh, I try to help uh, all of the homies with uh, with what I got. So yeah, thanks a lot, YouTube. Uh, see you next time. And uh, have fun with all of this. Ciao, ciao.